Yep, so what's up, guys? This is your favorite channel, Wabi Sabi Fusion here. Today we are gonna see what if Naruto son of Baikuya. So let's move on to the video. Not even a few hours ago, the Sarate was invaded by Ryoka. Baikuya and the other captains watched as the light crashed into the spirit barrier and flashed for a while, reminding the calm and beautiful captain of her late husband's technique. Baikuya felt moisture in her eyes, but quickly blinked it away and told herself a Kachiki must uphold the law, no matter what the cost. Baikuya thought, Minato kun Naruto kun. She winced at the painful memory of losing the two people dearest to her but stilled it with her usual cold personality. She had to be strong for the Soul Society, regardless of her painful losses. The captain commander called for a meeting, because the captain of 3rd Division Ichimaru Jin failed to kill the Ryoka. Soon all the captains gathered for their meeting. Yamamoto spoke, now Jin Ichimaru you said you encountered the Ryoka? And even let them escape how do you plead? Kenpachi the captain of 11th division just sneered, coward. Jin shrugged, what can I say I messed up? The fox-like captain never lost his creepy grin. Soifen muttered, this is so stupid. The young captain of 10th division grumbled, stupid grown-ups arguing about crap. Toshiro was bored with listening to the older captains bickering. Kairaku sighed, oh boy tempers are running high today. Baikuya was silent while still thinking of her beloved and son she kept her usual emotionless mask, but on the inside was full of pain and sorrow. But soon they received word that the Ryoka defeated Renji the lieutenant of Baikuya. Yamamoto spoke, the situation is dire, I will overlook Jin's actions from earlier. He opened his eyes to reveal determined black eyes, let us declare war on these Ryoka. But then a massive Ryatsu appeared and actually sent the captain commander to his knees. Soon the captain saw the source. A young woman who looked to be 5'3 appeared in a burst of shunpo, she had long platinum orange hair with silver streaks. She looked to be about in her early 20s, yet felt far stronger than the head captain. Her eyes were a bright green. She wore the Wutai Hakama of an Aranker, yet her spirit energy was the perfect fusion of Soul Reaper, and hollow her figure match Renjiku's when. She was in the living world she hid in a shorter lighter hair colored gigai and called herself Masaki. But this is how she truly looks even her husband Issen, an ex-captain himself, had no idea of her true heritage. She was a member of the royal clan of the Soul Society, the Kujoro clan she's the younger sister of the Soul King and the very first Soul Reaper Hollow Fusion naturally born to. Yamamoto stuttered, Masaki Sensei. Masaki smiled at the old captain, hey Yamakun, my look at you you've gotten so old. She stared at her former lieutenant. Yamamoto yelled, you are one to talk melody, you're older than even the Sarate and Soul Reaper Academy combined. Masaki giggled, yeah I guess I was lucky to die young, huh. She then released a burst of massive spiritual pressure, and you should know better than to mention a woman's age little Yamakun. Yamamoto gulped and shivered from her spiritual pressure. Yamamoto then asked, why are you here melody? Masaki then turned serious, I'm here to warn you dot, dot Yamakun do not harm the Ryoka my son is among them. Soifen glared at the far more powerful woman, who do you think you are? Kairaku spoke, Soifen show her respect after she's our superior. Baikuya's gray eyes widened a bit as she recognized her, you're Masaki Kujaro the former Taicho of the Zero and First Divisions. Masaki grinned like a certain Ryoka, excellent it's nice to see that you know of my previous status. She noticed Shunsui and instantly flashed over to him she then hugged him hey little Kaiokun, I almost didn't recognize you. Kairaka was in heaven, ah if only Nana-chan would hug me like this. Masaki spoke, where's Shirokun? She hadn't seen her once black-haired student in some time now, and he in fact had been her favorite student. Toshiro was about to yell, but Kairaku spoke up, she means Captain Yukitake. Toshiro blushed, oh everyone chuckled at the young captain's embarrassment. Kairaku spoke, you see he's now bedridden from his illness sensei. Masaki pouted, oh she sighed, well, I hope he gets over it soon. Kairaku nods, me too sensei me too. Baikuya spoke up, when you say son do you mean Kurosaki Ichigo? Masaki nodded, yes he's my little strawberry joy. She sighed with nostalgia as she remembered how she and Isin first started dating. Jin chucked, well, he was certainly entertaining. The orange-haired ex-captain's eyes narrowed as she glanced at the silver-haired captain, was, did you have a run-in with my little boy? She then smiled, but was releasing some of her riatsu in an instant all the other captains were on the ground, struggling to even move. Even Anahana replaced her calm expression with one of shock, what incredible riatsu. Soifen couldn't even move much less talk. Baikuya was also surprised but tried to hide it. 
Kinpechi grinned, she may be a woman, but she's strong. I'd love to fight her. Masaki then ceased releasing her spiritual pressure, my son will be coming here to save Rukia-chan. She then turned and disappeared using Shunpo. Yamamoto then decided to end this meeting for now but against Masaki's warning. He still declare wartime on Ichigo and the others. With Masaki. Masaki flashed through the Sarate knowing exactly where her son was, my little Ichi don't worry mommy will teach you Bankai and how to use your hollow powers. She then headed straight for where she sensed her son's spirit energy. She then saw one of the floor titles open. Misaki thought. I see he's taking a shortcut to the Repentance Tower. She sighed and then headed for the closest building and ran over the rooftops heading for the tower. She looked around. This place sure has gained some changes since we built it over four millennia ago. Just then Masaki sensed small spiritual pressure behind her and turned to see two low-seated officers with their zanpakudo drawn. Masaki sighed, I guess I can't ask you to surrender? They shook their heads. Masaki sighed again and began releasing her spirit energy, a purple aura surrounded her to show she was a true hybrid of hollow and soul reaper. Dot, dot, she placed her hand on her sword, please forgive me for this. I don't really like killing. She then disappeared and in a flash, it was all over for the unfortunate lower-seated officers. Masaki sheathed her sword which somehow was still free of blood. While the two corpses had blood pooling out underneath them, Masaki gave them a small prayer before flashing away. She knew that Central 46 will eventually pick up on her spiritual pressure. 6th Division Barracks. Renji was unconscious on the bed after getting beaten by Ichigo. The lieutenants of the 3rd and 5th Divisions his old classmates were watching over him. Momo was shaking, our Renji. Kira a blonde-haired man with one visible eye the other hidden by his hair spoke. They just found him like this. Momo spoke, it's okay you did your best and saved our friend. Kira spoke again, I'll call 4th Division to send a healing squad. But a voice behind them spoke, don't bother it was Kachiki by Kuya. She spoke, just dump him in a cell he knew better than to go challenge the Ryoka on his own. Losing was not an option. She then turned away from her lieutenant, now take this wretch from my sight. Momo protested, that's no way to. Kira quickly placed one hand over her mouth, shut it Momo. He bowed to Baikuya, sorry Captain Kicheki right away. Baikuya then walked off. Soon Jin arrived grinning as usual, my, my now what was that all about? The captain of 6th division has always been like that. He then spoke, not to worry I will call Captain Anahana to help your friend now come along Kira. Kira nodded, yes captain. He soon left with his captain. Whoa, they sure did a member on you Renji. Momo jumped at the voice to see her childhood friend and captain of 10th division Hitsugaya Tishiro. He had short spiky white hair and icy green eyes. Momo yelled, Tishiro at least warn someone before you sneak up on them like that. Tishiro yelled back, oh quiet down Momo, and I told you I'm Captain Hitsugaya. He then spoke more softly. I'm here to give you a warning Momo. Beware of 3rd division. Momo was surprised. Huh, Kira squad? But why? Tishiro spoke. I don't trust Captain Ichimaru, but I'm not too sure about Kira either. He soon turned and left. Momo was surprised at her friend's words. Kichiki compound. Baikuya then looked around to make sure no one was around spying of course. She'd kill them with Sinbon's Akura if there was anyone. Here the captain then opened her little shrine to reveal two photos of two men her husband's Hisano, her first husband died before they could sire a child but Minato her second husband who she met on a mission to the living world in the leaf village due to a hollow infestation, managed to sire her first child and heir with her. Baikuya was only managing not to cry through sheer force of will as she gazed at the two men that meant the world to her and thought of her son, who may or may not be dead she didn't know. Baikuya then saw something that made the stoic captain's eyes actually widen she had received a gift from her husband, a crystal orb, not unlike the Hokage orb, that would allow her to view the hidden leaf village, even from the Sarate she saw a boy with spiky blonde hair and blue eyes, getting ganged up on by a group of masked wearing warriors and blue black ops. Baikuya's grey eyes were widened for the first time in centuries, since before she lost her best friend Yuruchi Shihoin despite. How she always called Yurichi a work hat. When she was younger, the older fun-loving Shinigami was like an older sister to Baikuya but when Baikuya heard about the crime, it hurt the Kachiki heiress deeply. Baikuya spoke, Naruto-kun? She then narrowed her eyes into a stilly glare at the Anbu hurt her child the stoic captain began releasing her spiritual pressure, a pink aura surrounded her. Instantly everyone in the Kachiki compound could feel their leader's spiritual aura and fell to their knees in fright. 
Baikuya then entered her family's private Senkai gate and went into the living world to bring her child home. In the leaf right now, a certain blonde Jinchuriki was getting hurt just for walking near a food cart the Anbu had managed to catch him and now were stabbing him with their swords and kunai. But then a strange gate resembling a Japanese sliding door appeared the gate opened releasing a veil of white light and out from the light stepped a woman with long black hair held up by a white headpiece called a kensikenshi, wore a long white heori over a black robe, on the back of her heori was a rhombus with the kanji for six in it, her robes were loose to show off her large breasts. The woman had a cold look in her slate gray eyes as she in an instant appeared in front of the blonde boy. She was also wearing an expensive looking scarf around her neck and white gloves that only covered the back of her hands were seen. Strapped to her side was a sword. One Anbu with a horse mask spoke. Hey woman out of the way we're busy. But he was secretly ogling the woman's breasts they were as large as tsunades from the looks of her two accessories she was from a noble clan. But then they found themselves unable to move due to a sudden increase in pressure. Baikuya was unleashing her spiritual pressure. The civilians actually nearly died at the contact. BAKUDM number 61, Rikijagram. Baikuya held out one hand with two fingers aimed at them. They flashed, and the head of the Anbu assault found himself paralyzed by six thin beams of light. Ugh, what trickery is this woman? Release me. The other Anbu rushed at her with their katana drawn. Allow me to show you the difference in strength between us Ryoka you couldn't beat me in a thousand years. The Kachiki matriarch then unsheathed her sword. She then pointed her sword toward the ground. Bankai she dropped her sword, and it fell toward the ground and sunk into it water like ripples appeared where her sword dropped. The Anbu were surprised and then laughed. Ooh your sword sunk into the ground we're so scared. But then two rows of a thousand swords rose up. Baikuya finished, scatter Senbon's Akura Kajayashi. The swords became a storm of thousands of petal-like blades. The Anbu spoke crap. The storm swarmed the Anbu killing them all there were 20 Anbu members in this assault. Baikuya then recalled Sinbon's Akura back to her dot, dot the blades swarmed back to their wielder dot, dot but, then an Ajechus level wolf-like hollow, tried to attack her from behind the blades quickly formed a shield around Baikuya blocking the hollow. The wolf hollow grinned, he is soul reaper. You got some impressive spiritual pressure, you a captain? Its voice was like a deep growl. The noble captain spoke in a cold tone, yes the Taicho of 6th Division Kachiki Baikuya. The hollow's red eyes widened into a look of pure joy, excellent not just a captain, but the most famous captain of all. He was about to attack, but saw an unconscious blonde boy behind the captain. The assault on Naruto caused the boy to go unconscious. He spoke with drool coming from his mouth, awesome the boy has some massive spirit energy too. Since I'm currently no match for you Captain Kachiki I'll just go for the boy. He quickly dove at Naruto with his mouth open, you're mine boy. Baikuya's gray eyes widened, but she used Shunpo to easily appear in front of him. Baikuya spoke in an ever icier than normal tone, you will not touch my child hollow scum. The storm of blades began to grow bigger and multiply, and then they were enclosed in a sphere of innumerable blades. If anyone spiritually aware came to Kanahagakur, they would be shocked to see a massive sphere of pink above the village. Bunkei Sinmon's Akura Kajayashi. Baikuya then picked Naruto up and vanished with a flicker of Shunpo. The wolf the judges paled. Oh crap. The sphere then imploded killing the hollow and creating a powerful shockwave throughout the village the buildings, unlucky enough to be in the sphere, were totaled. Saratobi practically rushed out of his office at feeling the shockwave. Baikuya was a few miles outside the village with Naruto in her arms and Monzakura had returned to sealed form sheathed. She then adjusted to hold Naruto in one arm while drawing her Zanpakuto with the other. Baikuya then pierced the air with Sinvan's Akura, and the same gate appeared. Instantly the Kachiki walked in and the gate closed before fading. 4th Division Infirmary. The Senkai gate at the Kachiki compound glowed, and Baikuya came out with her son in her arms. She then used Shunpo and headed straight for 4th Division. Anahana was tending to one of the low-seated soul reapers brought in after the Ryoka invasion. Dot when she felt Baikuya's Ryatsu and turned to see the 6th Division captain standing there with a hurt boy in her arms. Baikuya spoke, Anahana I need a favor. Anahana asked, what can I do for you Baikuya? She was confused Baikuya hadn't visited her in centuries. The Kachiki matriarch then handed her the boy, heal him for me. Anahana was surprised, Baikuya whose child is this? Baikuya spoke, he is my son my heir. Needless to say Anahana was shocked after all the years of knowing Baikuya, she never knew her fellow captain was actually a mother. 
Baikuya then turned to leave but said, if anything happens to my son Anahana then you and your squad will die by my hand. She then took off in a blur of Shunpo. Anahana nodded, got it. She then gently placed the boy on a bed and was about to start healing him when she saw something strange. Dada's wounds were already hissing and healing Anahana thought. What is going on? His wounds are already healing. But she decided to give whatever was healing him a helping hand or keto spell in this case. Soon the boy was all better now he was sleeping, resting up. 5th Division Office. Aizen was thinking about what had happened so far Ryoka invasion and wartime exceptions the gentle captain had a bad feeling about this. Aizen then heard a knock he then spoke. That you Momo? Come in. His lieutenant clad in her pajamas came in Momo spoke. Could I stay with you Taicho? Aizen looked at her and spoke, what, do you think I'd turn you away would I be that cruel? Momo then bowed, I won't fall asleep in front of you captain, I refuse to be rude and fall asleep. Aizen smiled, it's okay Momo come in and sit down, he then spoke, you know Baikuya wanted to have Renji discharged, but that was met with opposition. Momo was surprised, opposition was that you captain Aizen? Aizen smiled, no one wanted to see Renji discharged he's a great fighter and liked by everyone he'll be able to rejoin the front lines in no time at all. Momo then looked at her captain, Captain Aizen he always knows how to make me feel better his words personality and scent, they help heal my heart I'm happy to serve under you Captain Aizen. Momo after a while nodded off to sleep and Aizen tucked her in. Aizen then stood up and left he needed to investigate something. Next morning, Momo woke up. Huh, she suddenly gasped and got up changing into her lieutenant uniform and tied her hair in the bun she then grabbed her Zampakudo and lieutenant's badge and instantly headed out but what she would find would shock and horrify her. 4th Division Infirmary Naruto had woken up and managed to sneak out of the infirmary Naruto was now wandering the squad barracks when several people holding swords rushed by and accidentally knocked the boy over. Naruto shook off the dizziness, ow he then decided this place was too dangerous and wanted to know how to get the heck out of here he quickly ran for cover. Near the tower. Momo screamed as she saw something horrifying Aizen was impaled on a Zampakudo pinned to the tower. The other lieutenants quickly heard her screams and ran over Kira yelled, Momo what is it he gasped when he saw Aizen. The kind and gentle Taicho of 5th Division impaled. A familiar annoying voice spoke. My what is all this racket so early in the morning? Soon Jin walked up. Momo remembered Toshiro's warning. Beware of 3rd Division dot dot especially when Aizen goes out alone. Momo screamed and drew her Zanpakuto. You did this. She then charged at the Captain Klang only to be shocked as Kira blocks her. Momo spoke. W.Y. Azuru. Kira spoke, I am the lieutenant of 3rd division no one raises their sword at my captain for any reason. Momo begged, please move Kira. Kira denied, no, I can't. Momo asked a little louder, please move. Kira spoke firmly, no. Momo screamed, move out of the way. Kira yelled back, I won't. Momo then released her shikai, snapped obium. Her sword changed into a prong looking weapon. Kira gasped, you dare release your zampakuto here. Momo aimed with her sword and shot a fireball at Kira. Kira avoided it. I guess it can't be helped raise your head Wabasuk. His sword changed into what looked like a small reverse galitatine blade but then clang. It was revealed to be Hitsugaya Toshiro captain of 10th division and he did not look happy Toshiro. Had his own Zampakudo drawn and had blocked both of them. Toshiro spoke, don't move either of you. He then ordered, arrest them both of them. Renjiku grabbed Momo, and the lieutenant of 9th division Shuhei Hisagi, grabbed Kira. Jin chuckled, sorry about my lieutenant captain Hitsugaya. Toshiro had his back to Jin, Jin just now you tried to kill Momo, didn't you? Jin kept his smile up. Toshiro warned, if you ever make Momo bleed I'll kill you. With Naruto. The kid somehow got himself lost and wandered near the 11th division area where a fierce battle is underway. With Ichigo. Ichigo is fighting Kenpachi using Zenjetsu only he wanted to save Hinata him for a surprise, but he may need her soon, because Zenjetsu just isn't cutting it literally Yuchiru Kusajishi Kenpachi's hyperactive childlike lieutenant is watching Ken-chan play with Ichi-chan. Ichigo is exhausted, damn it what is this guy? He then glanced at Hinatahem who was strapped to his right side, at this rate I need to use her. So the orange-haired soul reaper drew Hinatahem dot. 
In sealed form she resembled an average katana, except her guard was flame-shaped, and even in sealed form, she could summon flames to some degree, just not as much as she could in Shikai, and later Bankai. Kenpachi the large bloodthirsty captain of squad 11 Grand 2 Zampakudo, not bad kid, he soon was on Ichigo like a bull, with his sword aimed to sever Ichigo's head, but Ichigo counters with Hinata hum dot, dot clang dot, dot their swords, sparked as they battled for dominance. Ichigo now can cut Kenpachi with Hinata hum and even Zenjatsu. Naruto was hiding behind a building watching, wow these guys are so cool. Unfortunately Yuchiru heard him and zipped over Lichty split he was hiding behind the building Yuchiru was on. The girl studied the boy who looked to be her age, yet was taller than she was Yuchiru then beamed. Hi, what's your name? Naruto was shocked by her bluntness, but actually was happy someone wanted to know who he was, um, I'm Naruto Naruto Yuzumaki. Yuchiru smiled and introduced, nice to meet you Naru Naru, I'm Yuchiru Kusajishi, she gave him a nickname which she'll probably forget real soon. Naruto became fast friends with the hyperactive lieutenant he asked, so Yuchiru who are those guys down there? He pointed at the battling soul reapers. Yuchiru smiled and spoke, the scary one is my captain Kenchan, and the orange haired one is Ichi, they're playing together, Naruto thought, looks more like they're trying to kill each other to me. The two children watched as the two battled it out, then Ichigo leapt back and spoke, blaze h, i, n, o, t, e, h, i, m, e, fire, princess, the katana glowed red and changed into a long Dido Nadechi blade the sword, now was on fire like Ryujin Jaka and was completely red blade hilt, and guard with the guard now shaped like a roaring flame, were all bright fiery red, and at the end of the hilt was a flaming whip. Kenpachi was surprised, so you know Shikai let's continue, he then rushed at Ichigo, only to get sent flying by the whip on Hinata him he, felt the area it touch burn, Kenpachi grinned demonically, such elation, Ichigo spoke, you're mocking me, that's why you haven't called on your Zampakudo you should be careful my Zampakudo can cut you now, Kenpachi spoke, my Zampakudo, he then started laughing and held up the battle worn sword, sorry to disappoint you Ichigo but I don't know my sword's name this is my Zampakudo, Ichigo spoke? Is that right? Good that means it won't get any stronger so now. He raised Zenjetsu Klang only to see Kenpachi's blade penetrate the massive cleaver blade. Kenpachi spoke, so now what? You thought you could win? Zenjetsu cracked and shattered in half as Kenpachi's sword penetrated Ichigo's chest and his heart. Kenpachi explained, you see my spirit energy is much too great to be sealed when I fight I have to hold back otherwise it's over too quickly you're the one who should be careful. I told you to keep you spirit energy sharp. Ichigo fell to the ground. Kenpachi then turned away and held his sword, HMPH how disappointing it was over too fast. Ichigo thought, no no I can't die here. I want to win I have to win. Soon Zanjetsu materialized as Kenpachi walked off soon Zanjetsu stood there over his fallen wielder. Ichigo was shocked, Zizanjetsu. The man spoke, Ichigo which is it, do you want to win or live? Ichigo whispered, I have to win. Zanjetsu spoke, I can't hear you. Ichigo yelled out, I want to win. Zanjetsu then placed one hand on his wielder, very well allow me to take you there. Soon his cape covered both of them. In a different part of the Serate, Yasutora Sato or Chad as he goes by, was battling a captain of his own the captain of 8th division Kairaku Shunsui. Shad was blasting at the energetic but lazy captain, but kept missing then Kairaku uses Shunpo to appear behind Chad, and flicked him flying with just his fingers. Why? Why are you fighting so hard Ryoka? To save Rukia Kachiki. Kairaku was surprised, Rukia, but she went missing in the world of the living only this past month it seems like such a thin friendship acquaintanceship at best to risk your life for. Chad agrees, you're right I barely know her, but he stood up, Ichigo wishes to save her, and that's the only reason I need to fight. Kairaku adjusts his hat in size, oh well you have amazing resolve for a Ryoka it would be rude of me to try and convince you otherwise, he then drew his Zampakudo which were twin swords, unfortunately now it means I must take your life. Chad then starts reminiscing about the time Ichigo and him first met and first fought their first battle together, as a team Chad charged spirit energy in his transformed fist, Ichigo I may die but I will beat him if I live I'll re-swear on that promise dot. Dot that we swore long ago. Chad charged at Kairaku with his energy charged fist raised, but sadly Chad just wasn't fast enough as Kairaku struck him first the captain whispered, sorry. Chad fell to the ground bleeding. 
On a roof of the area Nana the lieutenant of 8th division watched soon a messenger from the secret remote unit of squad 5 arrived. Nano sensed his approach and spoke, what is it? Couldn't they have used a hell butterfly to deliver a message? The squad member spoke yes, but this one was signed by Captain Commander Yamamoto and Captain Hitsugaya of 10th division. Nano was surprised and turned to face the agent, a conjoined signature, is it a top secret message? Kairaku stood over the down chad for a human to even set foot in the serate is a feat in of itself but for one to actually manage to fight nearly equal to a captain like myself. Dot. That is truly incredible. He complimented Chad, you are truly amazing for a human. Kairaku then surveyed the damage done by Chad's final blow. Dot. Dot the ground was broken and there was smoke and flames. Kairaku spoke, the power of his final blow was truly frightening and glad he missed. Nano soon arrived, Captain there's a message, Kairaku turned to his lieutenant, what is it Nano? Now that you mention it there was a boy from the secret remote messenger unit here earlier wasn't there? Nano then spoke, Captain Azen has been killed, Kairaku was shocked as he listened to his lieutenant explain, Kairaku sighed, so Sasuke is dead, huh, shall we go pay our respects? Nano then noticed Chad on the ground, Captain Miss Ryoka is still alive, she raised one arm and charged some spirit energy into her arm and hand, shall I finish him off? But then a wave of massive spiritual pressure, froze the lieutenant Kairaku simply chuckled, come out Masaki sensei. Soon the orange haired ex captain made her appearance Masaki studied Nano, she looks like her. Kairaku nods, yup, Masaki in a blur of flash step appears in front of chat and easily picked up the tall boy, I'll take custody of him dot, dot after all he's a friend of my little itchy, and I can't let a friend of my son get killed, Kairaku nods, alright, I'll leave the Ryoka in your hands sensei dot, dot come along nano, they both disappeared with Shunpo. Masaki then looked at the boy she was holding, Chad, you've helped my little itchy grow, I won't just let Soul Society capture you. She then took off using Shunpo Sanito heading to the hidden area underneath Sakyoku Hill. Back with Ichigo, inner world. Soon Ichigo got that falling feeling he found himself on a building, except it was sideways instead of right side up. Ichigo recognized where they were and instantly fell backwards, as if trying to hold on to the building. Zanjetsu asked, what are you doing? Ichigo spoke. I don't want to fall again. Zanjetsu spoke, there is no chance of that. It only happened because your inner world went out of balance when you became a hollow. Ichigo was surprised, especially when Zanjetsu threw him a sword. But it was normal. Ichigo told him, wait this isn't you. My sword's name is Zanjetsu. Slaying Moon, of course he forgot in his surprise about Hinatahim who's in sealed form right now. Zanjetsu then spoke, do you mean this? The sword your enemy broke? He held up the repaired cleaver blade of his sealed form, I'm afraid I can't let you have it. Then he threw it aside. Ichigo yelled, hey what are you doing? Ichigo headed after it, but a voice spoke, move aside. Ichigo watched as a white blur went by him. The mysterious person flew toward the falling sword, caught it, flipped, and landed perfectly on the building. Ichigo was shocked as the specter turned to him, just what are you? He was shocked as this mysterious person looked like a perfect clone of him only differences were this man's skin, clothes, and hair were a bleach white. His eyes were yellow, and the sclera were black as were his teeth. His yellow eyes reflect with an intelligence Ichigo knew his own. The man spoke and he sounded like he was speaking underwater. What's up partner? Zanjetsu spoke, this time Ichigo you must defeat yourself, prove that you're worthy to wield me, if you wish to wield me then take me from your own hands, the clone chuckled and held the sword out as if daring Ichigo, go ahead and try partner, then he attacked and was so fast Ichigo barely had time to block just try and take him back partner, Ichigo was shocked as his depelganger easily pushed him back then he saw Zanjetsu's spiritual pressure, it was emitting a red spiritual aura. Ichigo thought, Unreal Zenjetsu is an even more amazing sword than I thought its spiritual pressure is burning up the air. A regular sword looks like a stick next to it. He then gasped as his sword turned into a shinai, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? But then a young woman appeared next to him. She had long red hair and crimson eyes. She wore a red furisode kimono with flame designs, which slightly revealed her busty figure. She looked to match Rukia in age. She looked pissed, Ichigo you bastard did you forget you have me too? Ichigo grumbled as she kicked him in a way Rukia used too, ow damn girl. The girl then smacked him in the head, Baka, why didn't you use me in tandem with Zanjetsu? 
Ichigo's inner hollow was watching with amusement, hehehe <laughs> now this is entertainment. Zanjetsu looked on, Ichigo you must hurry and take me back before you die. After a small argument Ichigo apologized, I'm sorry Hinatahem I promise that as soon I get Zanjetsu back, I'll use you both to battle Kenpachi. Hinatahem smirked and spoke, you damn well better baka, she then disappeared. Ichigo then drew her sealed form, blaze Hinatahem. The sword morphed into a Daido Kadichi combo blade that was all red and covered in flames. Its guard was in the shape of flames a flaming whip was on the hilt. The hollow grinned, finally let's go. He then twirled Zenjetsu and hurled it at Ichigo who barely managed to dodge. The inner hollow then retrieved the sword with the wrapping, damn missed. Ichigo was shocked, using Zenjetsu like a spear, what kind of move was that? Then the hollow spoke, you're really hopeless Ichigo. Zenjetsu is a powerful sword how the hell did you get so bloody? He began twirling Zenjetsu again. He continued, can you become best friends with someone just by learning their name? That's all you've done so far. You think all you have to do is call Zenjetsu's name. And you even forgot you had another Zanpakudo. They both are capable of so much more. If you had opened your heart to them they would have become so much stronger. But you didn't because you don't care about your Zanpakudo at all. You're one of those people who believes he only has to train himself. Ichigo then looked at Zanjetsu and thought, he's right I never tried to get to know either of my Zanpakuto. They are more than just mere weapons. He kept avoiding the attacks from his other self, they are alive and have names. Ichigo then remembered what he said when Kenpachi revealed he didn't know his sword's name. Good so then it won't get any stronger. Ichigo mentally kicked his own ass, why the hell did I say that? I really am a baka, we are the same I acted just like that man, the man who never bothered to learn his sword's name. Ichigo then realized, I want to know Zanjetsu, Hinataham I want to learn more about you both. Hollow Ichigo then prepared to deliver the final blow, hey, it's about time to wrap this up, he smirked, I'll show you how to use both Zanpakudo the right way, you'll never use them again, he rushed forward with Zanjetsu raised, Ichigo then asked, will you both little by little tell me about yourselves, I want to learn more about my priceless partners, so tell me and once again let me fight alongside you Zanjetsu. In an instant when hollow Ichigo struck, Zanjetsu was once again in Ichigo's arms. Ichigo then looked at the silent man, are you giving me a second chance? Thank you Zanjetsu, Hinataham I won't let either of you down. Outside, Kenpachi then felt Ichigo's spirit energy rise, what? His Riyatsu. Soon the orange-haired soul reaper rose up with Zanjetsu and Hinataham, both drawn and ready to fight. He emitted his blue spiritual aura, inner world. The hollow breathed and spoke, phew. So he's gone. That's all you wanted right? Zanjetsu nods. Yes, I apologize for troubling you. The hollow smirks and spoke, it's okay we need him to win. He's king of this world. Now I'm done I guess I'll head home. Then he started being absorbed into Zanjetsu, the kids got potential Zanjetsu raise him well. Because his power will eventually be mine. The Ichigo lookalike completely disappeared. Zanjetsu looked up at the sky as did Hinataham who materialized after the hollow was gone. Zanjetsu spoke, Ichigo I hate the rain. It rains in here too. When you're upset the clouds cover the sky and when you're sad it rains. To be able to hold back the rain I'll give you all my power. Believe in me Ichigo you are not fighting alone. Hinataham thought, believe in me Ichigo I'll help in any way necessary for you to win just trust in me Ichigo. Her voice echoed through the inner world, outside. Kenpachi was shocked as Ichigo's Riyatsu continued to rise, what? His rear yoku was gone, and now it's practically blazing. And his spiritual pressure, Ichigo now was blazing with blue Riyatsu, and his wounds were no longer bleeding. Kenpachi was even more surprised, the bleeding is stopping. Then Ichigo rushed at Kenpachi with both his swords ready to strike. Ichigo then gave Kenpachi a nice gash on his shoulder. Kenpachi met him head on, but Ichigo was now managing to push him back. Kenpachi was shocked, what, he's overpowering me. Kenpachi was now sent back, but managed to slow his trip. By digging his sword into the building, Ichigo spoke, sorry I have to end this quickly. Kenpachi spoke, end this quickly, no that won't do let's make this last as long as possible, soon the two had a battle of blades, Ichigo cut Kenpachi's face with Zanjetsu, and gave him a gash through his stomach with him. Kenpachi managed to nick Ichigo in the cheek with his blade, soon Ichigo discovered just how stubborn Kenpachi was he's managing to cut and damage him, but the man just refused to go down, Ichigo yelled, what's wrong with you, are you insane, do you like fighting that much, aren't you afraid of being hurt or dying, Kenpachi just laughs, what's wrong with me, there's something wrong with you, 
How can you be so powerful and not enjoy fighting? Can Pachi continued revel in it death and pain? Those are the rewards of battle. 11th Division Barracks. Ikaku was leaning against a wall feeling the massive spiritual pressure from both Kenpachi and Ichigo, soon the fifth seed arrives Yumichika, with the most ridiculous looking hairstyle Ikaku makes fun of him, and the man obsessed with beauty got annoyed and placed a wig on, soon the two spoke about Ichigo's chances against their captain. Back with Kenpachi in Ichigo's fight. Kenpachi looked up at the sky, such elation. Against you he reached for his eye patch and removed it, I think I can fight with no restraints at all. Kenpachi starts glowing with yellow spirit energy, with Ichiru and Naruto. Soon an agent of the Ritei Tai Messenger Squad for Squad 11 appeared behind Ichiru, Lieutenant Kusajishi. I have an urgent message for you and Zaraki Taicho. Ichiru spoke without turning, all right but tell me later. Naruto paid more attention to the battle than the man. But the agent insisted, I'm sorry, but this message was signed by Captain Commander Yamamoto and Captain Hitsugaya of Squad 10. Yuchiru waved him off, fine tell us later. Naruto was staring at them. The agent obviously was pushing his luck, but lieutenant, I was ordered to tell all the captains and lieutenants. Yuchiru finally turned around while releasing pink Ryuatsu, which took on the form of an angry cat head, leave. Kenny is fighting right now. The agent shivered with visible nervousness and fear. Kenpachi was still releasing yellow spirit energy. Ichigo spoke, no fair what have you been hiding? Kenpachi spoke, hiding, you'd think I'd cheat? He then revealed the secret of the eye patch. I had the research and development department make this for me. Upon closer inspection the eye patch had eyes and mouths. These monsters devour spirit energy and now I can use the energy they consumed. He then slashed with his sword and then the entire building came down to kill you. It's that simple. His eyes were glowing yellow. A familiar voice spoke to Ichigo, do you hear it Ichigo? Ichigo then turned to see Zanjetsu and Hiham standing beside him. Hinata him finished for Zanjetsu, the sound of his sword screaming? Ichigo nods, yes. Zanjetsu spoke, he cannot hear it. When those who do not trust each other fight together their strength is diminished. Hinata him added, those who rely on their own strength can't comprehend that. Zanjetsu asked, Ichigo do you trust us? Ichigo then replied, Yes all my power is yours and lend me yours. Zanjetsu spoke, very well. He and Hinataham placed their hands on their respective sword forms. Ichigo's spirit energy spiked even more and increased. Kenpachi was elated, good I feel your spiritual pressure spiking again. Ichigo told him, of course I'm borrowing Zanjetsu and Hinataham's power. We fight as a team. I'm not losing to someone like you who fights alone. Kinpachi spoke, Zanjetsu Hanadahem those the names of your Zanpakuto? You're using the powers of your Zanpakuto in fighting as a unit? What a load. A Zanpakuto is simply a weapon teaming up with a weapon is the way of a coward who can't fight on his own. Kinpachi powered up, for guys like us. His yellow spirit energy took on the form of a demonically grinning skull. It ain't our way Ichigo. Zanjetsu spoke, he's coming Ichigo. Hinatahim added, we can't hold back your bleeding much longer. Ichigo thought, only one shot. His spirit energy took on the form of a hollow mask. Soon the two rushed at each other and collided in a burst of yellow and blue riatsu. The explosion of spirit energy destroyed the buildings. Soon it showed Ichigo and Kenpachi all bloody in a stalemate. Ichigo fell first, damn sorry guys. He collapsed. Kenpachi stared down at his second strongest opponent, and then blood spurted from his shoulder, heh. Why are you sorry fool, you won. Kenpachi collapsed too. Yuchiru soon looked down at the fallen orange-haired soul reaper, then she bowed, thank you Ichi-chan. Ken-chan had fun fighting you. It's been a long time since I saw him so happy. Naruto was sweat dropping at the hyper lieutenant. Yuchiru then shockingly easily lifted Kenpachi, time to go Ken-chan. She turned back to Ichigo, try to stay alive Ichi-chan, and come back to play with Ken-chan again some time. She then disappeared with incredible speed. On a roof, Kenpachi had been reminiscing about his and Yuchiru's past. Then he opened his eyes to see Yuchiru. The pink-haired childlike lieutenant spoke, hey. Kenpachi spoke, Yuchiru. Yuchiru was happy to see her father-brother figure awake, yay. You're finally awake. Don't worry I called Captain Anahana she'll be here soon. Kenpachi asked, what about him? Yuchiru then quieted down, I don't know he was alive when we left. Kenpachi grinned, good, I have to have a rematch. Yuchiru looked surprised, huh, why? Kenpachi spoke, you know why I lost. Yuchiru denied it, but you didn't lose Ken-chan. Kenpachi chuckled softly, idiot look at me. Yuchiru still denied it, you didn't lose Ken-chan. Ichi-chan said as Zanpakuto were helping him, it was three against one, you won Ken-chan. 
Kenpachi chuckled only to get smacked by an irritated Yuchiru. Kenpachi then spoke, fighting with a Zanpakuto. He then asked, Yuchiru do you remember the day I gave you your name? Yuchiru nodded, yes. I even remember the number of clouds that day. Kenpachi agreed, yeah me too. His grip on his sword increased and caused a little more blood to spurt out. Yuchiru spoke, Ken-chan. Kenpachi spoke, quiet. It's been a long time since I thought about the pain of not having a name. He then lifted his sword up to his face, I kept you waiting a long time, didn't I? Why now? You wonder. I'm not too late am I? Will you tell me your name? The sword remained silent. Kenpachi glanced at it a little longer before chuckling, I knew it. He placed his hand over his face, blast it. I want to become stronger. I found a good opponent to fight I want to become even stronger. Yuchiru starts reminiscing about her past she came from a deadly area in the Rukin district and could have died but somehow she survived and met Kenpachi, who was then nameless. She then spoke, I know you can do it Ken-chan let's get stronger together. Calls to me you're the strongest I know. Kenpachi was silent to show he was unconscious. Yuchiru looked, Ken-chan? Her cry echoed, Ken-chan, at the Senzaku Tower. Ganju and Hanataro finally made it. Hanataro asked, that noise has stopped. You think Ichigo's okay? Ganju spoke, this is no time to be distracted. It's our turn now. The two unlikely saviors then headed to the tower by Ganju's hook claw item. With Ichigo. Yuruchi in cat form looked down at the unconscious Ichigo. Soon the Saki showed up in a burst of shunpo. Within the Senzaku Tower. Rukia was surprised as the rumbling stopped, the sounds have ceased. That Riyatsu is gone too. She wondered which one died, I can't tell. But no blood should be shed on my behalf. She then looked down, am I truly worth it? Tell me Kayan. With Ichigo. Yurichi spoke, forgive us Ichigo we're a little late. Masaki studied him, you took quite a beating honey, but that's to be expected fighting against the most bloodthirsty captain in Seoul society history. Yuruchi then released her spirit energy as she transformed. I won't let him die Masaki. Masaki nods. Got it we'll take him to our secret training ground under Sakyoku Hill. She looked at the blonde haired blue eyed boy. Would you like to come with us? Naruto nodded. Why yes. Masaki scooped him in her arms and disappeared along with Yuruchi, who grabbed Ichigo. At the Senzaku Tower. Two guards posted were arguing then, thanks to a drug from Hanataro, one fell woozy. Then Ganju dropped down and elbowed the other hard. The two then walked up to the last door. Ganju groaned, great a shutter type. Hanataro smiled and dug in his kimono, don't worry I have a spare key. He soon opened the door. Ganju raised the door more, alright let's have a look this Rukia everyone wants to save so bad. He soon saw her and a terrible memory came back. Rukia asked, who's there, are you one of Ichigo's friends? Hanataro was excited to see her and beckoned her to come with them now. Ganju remembered Rukia from that night the night his older brother Kane was slain. Rukia recognized the pattern on Ganju's clothes, you're a member of the Shiba clan? Hanataro noticed, Ganju you know her? Ganju spoke, how could I forget that face the face of the soul reaper who murdered my brother? Hanataro was shocked. Rukia then spoke, he's correct Hanataro, if he is of the Shiba clan, then his older brother Kayan indeed died by my hand. Hanataro was shocked even more when Ganju practically lunged at Rukia and grabbed her by the shirt. Just when it looked like Ganju was about to kill Rukia a massive spiritual pressure frozen them. Ganju and Hanataro were shocked by it, they then turned to see a person walking toward them. It was Kachiki Baikuya, the legendary 6th division captain herself Baikuya was inwardly annoyed she just wanted to catch up with her son and these Ryoka are getting annoying. 13th division barracks. A voice spoke out. What? Azen's been killed? Soon a white-haired man started to come out of the quarters. Who did it and when? The frightened massager spoke. WW we're not sure Captain Yuki take, but that's what we're trying to find out. Yuki take Shurm Taichio of 13th Division, groaned as he shook off all tiredness. Blast it. What's happened since I fell asleep? I'll get to the bottom of this, he vowed. Repentance Tower. Ganju and Hanataro were frozen in fear as Baikuya walked toward them, her spiritual pressure crushing around them parazzling them. I I can't believe it, I I it's. Hanataro was petrified. Ganju spoke with equal fear, Kachiki Baikuya, the Taicho of 6th Division. Ganju you've heard of her? Of course the Kachiki clan is one of the four noble clans in the Soul Society, and she's the first female and strongest clan head of her clan. She's also the most famous of the 13 captains. Why did she have to show up? Ganju shivered. W we don't even have half a chance against her, Ganju told them. Maybe dot. Dot she'll let us go if we beg for our lives, Ganju suggested. 
Hanataro was shocked, but Ganju, he looked toward Rukia, if we run we should take Rukia too. Ganju yelled, are you nuts, we have to cross the bridge, you think we can get past that woman? And you expect me to risk my life for this monster? The angry Shibamemabur yelled out, she killed my older brother, I refuse to die for her, I won't do it. Hanataro was in thought then he spoke shockingly serious, okay you're right this was never your mission anyways it was Ichigo's, but would you at least take Rukia with you when you go? I'll go and try to stall her, the usually timid boy said, both Ganju and Rukia were stunned at his words, Hanataro are you nuts, do you know what you're saying, Ganju yelled worried, why yes I do I know how you feel, Hanataro spoke, no, that's not what I mean, can't you feel her spiritual pressure, it's even stronger than Captain Zaraki's, we can't handle a person that strong, I know dot, dot but still I came to save Rukia I can't just do nothing, Hanataro then bowed to Ganju, thank you Ganju for everything, he gave a very scared smile, I hope we can meet again, he then turned and walked out, and no Hanataro, you can't, Rukia was about to try and stop him until Ganju kept her still, let me go, Rukia struggled to get loose, look at him the little idiot, he's frightened and he doesn't have his Zampakuda with him, Ganju could tell Hanataro was afraid by his body's actions, Ganju then let out a battle cry which was more like a bellow, Greya, it froze Hanataro and the timid boy turned, huh, what was that, he saw a very serious looking Ganju who had stormed out of the repentance cell, Hanataro was surprised, Ganju? Ganju glared down at him, move it, he then booted Hanataro away, Ganju then faced Baikuya, sorry brother, but your revenge will have to wait blame our sis for not raising me to be a coward who would abandon his comrades, he acted tough, okay captain you have to get by me first, in Hueco Mundo, no, Ganju, run little bro or she'll kill you, damn it, a familiar man with spiky black hair and aqua green eyes was watching in horror through the garganta, after Rukia killed Kayan the hollow that took over his body was sent back, here dot, dot somehow Kayan was still alive and managed to fight the hollow out of his body dot, dot he was nearly eaten several times, but being in Hueco Mundo has caused the former lieutenant to develop hollow traits of his own he is now powerful enough to match in a judge's or even an inexperienced Vasto lords in battle. Kayan was clad in an Espada-like outfit, a white Hakama shirt with white pants. His Zampakudo was strapped to his side. After he killed the hollow Nejibana was revived. Damn Kayan your little brother's an idiot. A mocking voice spoke out. Kayan growled as a tall muscular man with short blue hair and blue green eyes came up. He had on a white Hakama jacket which was open in pants. His hollow remains were on his mouth's left side, resembling a cat's jawbone his eyes had a green stripe on them, like the Pantera genius of cats. Shut it Grimjo, the former lieutenant glared at the sexta, sixth, espada, sorry, but lighten up man it'll all be over soon, Grimjo chuckled, a calm feminine voice soon spoke, ugh you two are so loud, soon a pale skinned woman came in, she had short messy black hair and green slitted eyes with teardrop, like marks going down, her face her lips were coated in black lipstick, she wore a white jacket with long coattails, and a white hakama on her head was a bone resembling a broken helmet like, the other one a zampakudo was strapped to her side. Grimjo sneered, oh Okuiora, it's you. The sexta espada hated the Kuatro, fourth espada, since they were still in their hollow forms. Grimjo was jealous that she became a vasto lord's while he remained in a judge's. Okuiora ignored his words and focused on the garganta, that one is your brother Kayan. Yes that's my twerp of a little brother, Kayan thought, screw this, I'd rather let Rukia finish killing me than watch my own baby brother get killed, Kayan spoke, Grimjo, Okwiora, I'm going to save my brother, Okwiora was a little surprised, are you sure that's wise Kayan, you will be tried as a hollow, I don't care I can't just stand by and let my little brother get killed, Kayan yelled, Grimjo spoke, I'll go with you, no, I'm going alone, Kayan shook his head, Grimjo growled, like hell you are, Okwiora sighed, such pointless yelling, enough out of you all, said another voice, a massive Ryatsu instantly silenced the two a ranker and former soul reaper, a man with spiky blonde hair and cat-like blue eyes appeared in a flash of yellow, a yellow glow emanating from his form, he wore a white version of the outfit he wore, when he was alive minus the vest, his jacket was unzipped to reveal a muscular torso, with the number zero in big black gothic style on it he, wore a Hayori similar to a Captain Hayori, except his had red flames on it, and the kanji for zero on the back, his hollow hole was located on his sternum just below his chest, right below his espada tattoo, his hollow remains were on his right arm and hand a claw bone he had been a vasta lord's, 
Before becoming an Aranker his nails were black and razor sharp. He is Namakis Minato the Zero, Zero Espada, and the former Yandame Hokage. Minato grinned revealing thanks I'll go with you Kay and after all I wish to see my dear wife and son again. He had missed her dearly when he had died and had been taken by Hollows to this place he had been watching his wife via Garganta try to cover her pain with a cold mask it hurt to see her try to act so strong yet be in so much internal pain and their son. He had seen through his Garganta what Naruto went though in his former home. Minato thought, by a chan, Sachi, I'm coming. Kayan nodded, let's get going Minato. The two then entered a Garganta they formed and headed for the Soul Society. Grimjo grumbled, lucky bastards. Okwiora just remained silent. Sarate, under the Sakyoku hill. Ichigo slept and was watched by his mother and Yuruchi soon. The orange-haired soul reaper slowly opened his eyes. Ugh where am I? Am I dead? He then looked around, so awaken at last. Ichigo turned to see Yuruchi standing along with his mother. Ichigo spoke. Yuruchi, mom, you're both okay? Masaki smiled. Well Ichigo we're in better shape than you are currently. Yurichi added, you should thank your own will to live a chigo dot. Dot frankly I'm surprised you didn't die from those injuries. Oh yeah I got hurt pretty bad, didn't I gasped his eyes widen as he remembered and Ichigo instantly shot up reopening his stomach wound. Masaki instantly reacted and used a paralyzing keto on her son. No Ichigo, you're hurt. Yuruchi tackled him back down. You are in no shape to be moving. Ichigo you're hurt. Why are you trying to kill yourself? Masaki cried out. Ichigo spoke. I have to mom. Chad and the others are hurt. Masaki smiled. Your friends are okay Ichigo. Masaki then dispelled an illusion Kido to reveal Chad with them. She had begun healing him with her Kido. Ichigo was shocked. A hey, amazing mom. Yurichi explained. Orihem and Uryu escaped unharmed just stay in that Kido and let it heal you. Yuruchi explained. Half your organs were crushed dot. Dot if you didn't have this in your pocket you'd be split in two. The cat then brought a dot hollow mask. Ichigo was shocked. That was in my pocket. Masaki was surprised. What? You didn't know you had it honey? Ichigo spoke. Well when I heard it saved me from when I fought Renji yesterday. I wanted to keep it. But Hinataro wanted me to get rid of it. Ichigo's next words made Masaki and Yuruchi both narrow their eyes. So I threw it into the underground waterway. He then explained, oh Hinataro's this kid from 4th division dot, dot he's a timid but really nice guy he healed me. Ichigo then picked up the mask, but how did this thing come back to me? Masaki then spoke, wait I will hold on to it. Ichigo was shocked, but I just got it back mom. Masaki gave her son a stern glare and released a bit of her riatsu. Ichigo, I am your mother, do as I say, hand over that mask. Ichigo shook from his mother's immense power. Sheesh okay, okay mom. He handed the mask to her. Masaki takes the mask from her son's hand. Sorry Ichigo you're not quite ready to learn how to control your hollow powers yet. Ichigo then spoke. Um dot dot mom did you carry me? Masaki smiled at her son. No sweetie Yuruchi here did. Ichigo was shocked. Really? He looked at the cat. You carried me? Amazing but wasn't I too heavy? Yuruchi spoke. No not when I turned into my true from. Ichigo was even more surprised, true form, he noticed his mother was giggling, the cat gave him a look, yes I've kept my true form from you all haven't I, the cat spoke, I see no reason to hide it from you any longer, soon he began to glow, behold my true form, soon smoke was in the area dot, dot a tall feminine figure stood in the smoke, Ichigo's was babbling, a gorgeous dark skinned woman with yellow eyes stood there, her violet hair went down to just above her waist. Ichigo also noticed one thing she was naked. The woman then gave Ichigo a teasing smirk. You look so surprised. People always assume I'm male due to how I sound in cat form. They are so naive. Revealing my true form is always so fun. After Ichigo had a yelling fit at Yuruchi to put clothes on and she teased him about seeing a naked girl she was now clad in an orange shirt and black pants and her hair was tied in a ponytail. Yuruchi explained about the item she used, and Ichigo wondered just who she was. But before Yuruchi could tell him a crushing riatsu was felt by both. Ichigo was shocked, this spiritual pressure, it's her. He remembered the riatsu of the one who nearly killed him. Yuruchi spoke, it's coming from the repentance tower. Ichigo quickly got up. Masaki was shocked as she watched her only son attempt to move. Yuruchi spoke out. Wait Ichigo, where are you going? Ichigo yelled. Ganju and Hanataro were going there. If I don't go who's going to save them? He grabbed both of his Zanpakudo and the item Yuruchi used. This thing can fly a person using Ryoku right? He then yelled. Fly. Ichigo flew out the opening and headed straight for the tower. 
Yuruchi watched and groaned. You fool. Masaki spoke. Don't worry Yuruchi let's just follow him. She disappeared along with Yuruchi. Repentance Tower. I sensed a spirit presence moving toward the repentance cell I came to see what terrible foe had come concealing its spiritual pressure. Baikuya spoke calmly. But it was only a big fat bug how absurd. Be gone. My sword is not for crushing vermin. Baikuya informed them. Rukia then attempted to move. Hanataro spoke worried. Rukia what are you doing? Rukia spoke frantically. Let me go Hanataro. If I don't stop he'll dot. Dot be killed. The younger Kachiki then collapsed. Hanataro ran up to her. Our Rukia. Rukia was too weakened. I I lost too much spirit energy from being in the repentance cell. My body's movement is all wrong. Hanataro then placed one hand on her shoulder, don't worry Rukia, she looked up at him, Hanataro told her you saw how confident Ganju was he must have some brilliant plan up his sleeve, that's what I believe, Ganju was shaking from Baikuya's Ryatsu, ugh dot, dot just the sight of her makes me shiver, this woman is the real deal alright with someone as strong as her using my tricks is just a waste of time. He then drew his Zampakudo which looked like a small clever type blade, I'll just take my chances. Ganju then did something completely stupid he rushed at Baikuya. Hanataro and Rukia were freaking out. He he didn't have a plan. Ganju grinned. Just kidding. He then drew back one of his bombs. Eat my tears of blood. But in the blink of an eye, Baikuya was right behind him. The Kachiki matriarch spoke, be gone. Ganju soon was bleeding from a sword wound, he collapsed. Hanataro yelled out, Ganju. But then Baikuya heard Ganju's voice, and not so fast. Baikuya was surprised to see Ganju bleeding but up. Baikuya spoke, are you deaf? I told you to disappear. Ganju then shouted out, save it. I don't care if you are of noble blood captain. I'm of the Shiba clan, and there's not one among us who's a coward. Baikuya's eyes widened at the revelation, so you are of that clan. Baikuya had one hand on her sword, then I apologize for dismissing you you will not leave here alive. She drew it. Ganju was confused, what are you going to do from all the way over there? Rukia cried out, no, one sama please. Baikuya brought her sword in a 90 angle position, scatter Sanvan Sakura, her blade turned pink and started disappearing, there were now Sakura petals around, Ganju was more surprised, the blade disappeared, Rukia knew what was coming so she screamed, run away, in a flash Ganju was now severely wounded, he fell to his knees, Hanataro spoke worried, G Ganju, Rukia cried out, no, the Shiba clan lost another one, but Baikuya now turned her stony gaze on them, Rukia and Hanataro both looked in horror at the gaze. Rukia begged, no, please, Wani-sama. Baikuya then began to move the hilt but, then a hand gripped her wrist and a man with spiky raven black hair and aqua green eyes appeared in front of Ganju. A familiar voice spoke behind Baikuya, now, now by a chan play nice. Baikuya turned her head and her gray eyes actually widened at who she saw he was tall and had spiky blonde hair and cat-like blue eyes. He wore a white outfit and had a zampakudo strapped to his side. Baikuya whispered, M. Minato-kun? She was genuinely shocked and elated to see her husband and father of her only child alive and in a rancor. But she didn't care he was still her husband regardless. She still wore the ring he gave her. The blonde man smiled. Yup it's me I've missed you by a chan. Baikuya then reformed her blade, sheathed it, and then wrapped her arms around her husband's neck, not even caring who saw Rukia was so shocked she had never seen her adopted sister sister in law so emotional. Baikuya gazed into her husband's blue eyes, Minato kun when I heard you died, and were dragged off by Hollow's eye I just. Minato smiled and gazed into her grey eyes. I know my sweet Sakura Kouhi Cherry Blossom Queen you covered up your pain with that cold mask you wear. He then actually took off her headpiece, and her long black hair now flowed down her back freely. You don't have to hide your emotions anymore by a chan, it's not a sign of weakness to show emotion in fact, emotions can be your greatest strength. He even removed her scarf leaving her clad in her captain's outfit. Baikuya nodded at her husband's request she also blushed at her nickname. Okay Minato-kun for you and Arsachi, I will start showing emotions again. She then kissed her husband her once stony gray eyes. Now once again showing fire and spirit similar to Ichigo's she was more like how she acted when she was Y-O-U-N-G-E-R-1. Rukia thought completely stunned by her sister's show of emotion, who is this man? Not since Hisano sama's death has one Isama shown such raw emotion. Ganju spoke weakly, be big brother? Kayan smiled, hey lil bro, it's nice to see you again you're grown since I last you, so how's Kukaku doing? He then turned to Rukia and waved, hey Rukia, how have you been? 
Rukia was even more shocked to see him, she stuttered, Kandono, Yukitake arrived just in time to see the strange scene, Baikuya was kissing some strange man, and Kayan was alive, Yukitake spoke, K Kayan, Kayan noticed and saluted Captain, how nice to see you again, Lieutenant Kayan Shiba returning for duty sir, Rukia spoke, B but how? When you stuck me Rukia you missed my heart about 2.0 millimeters below. Kayan lifted up his shirt to show the scar. Baikuya then turned to face Yukitake, though she kept close to her husband. What are you doing here Yukitake? Yukitake spoke. I should be asking you that Baikuya what were you thinking using your shikai? There's a law against using your zampakudo here. The captain commander has issued a wartime exemption use of Zampakudo is allowed. Yuki takes eyes widened, wartime exemption, is the appearance of a few Ryoka really that important? Was Azen truly killed by? Just then captain level spiritual pressure was felt by them. Baikuya and Yuki take were surprised as the spiritual pressure was at captain level, yet it felt inexperienced too. Minato wasn't impressed, hmm it's not bad, but it's nowhere near our own. He and Kayan weren't even phased by it. Soon an orange-haired teen with a wrapped cleaver sword on his back, and a second sword strapped to his side riding on what looked like a strange wing appeared. He flew upward and landed on the bridge. He then went to check on Hanataro. When he was sure Hanataro wasn't hurt he asked about Ganju, but Hanataro's tearful look was enough. Soon Ichigo turned to Rukia, Rukia I've come to save you. He then looked at her only to see a worried look. Hey what's with that look? I've come to save you so the least you could do is smile. Rukia then spoke, you fool I told you not to come, now look at you, idiot. Ichigo then spoke tch, alright I'm an idiot you can yell at me all you want later. He turned to Bayakuya after I beat her, but he wondered who the blonde man standing right next to the captain was. Who is this kid Bayachan? Baikuya gazed at her husband, he's just a Ryoka who I dealt with once before Minato-kun. Baikuya was annoyed by this boy's persistence she thought she already took care of his powers. Hey kid you actually think that you can beat Baya-chan? Ichigo spoke with confidence, I'll give it a try. Minato spoke, really, how about you fight me instead? Ichigo snorted, you? I'll bet I could beat you easy. Minato smirked, oh really? He then crossed his arms, I'll tell you what I won't even use my Zampakudo. Ichigo grinned an easy victory for him, he then was about to attack, but then Minato simply disappeared, and all Ichigo could see was a yellow light going by him. Minato then rematerialized behind the orange-haired soul reaper with one arm out, and claw-like nails gleaming with his back to Ichigo's. Then Ichigo fell to the ground bleeding from four gashes on his chest. Ichigo was shocked, he's fast, faster than Baikuya, I couldn't even read his movements. Rukia and Hanataro both cried out his name, Ichigo. Minato spoke, kid you have much to learn before you can fight me or Baya-chan. Baikuya was very surprised by her husband's speed, Minato-kun has become even faster, he could probably keep up with her. Thank you Minato-kun now I'll take care of him. Minato already knew about her Zampakudo she showed its abilities to him when they first met six years ago. Baikuya drew her sword and held it in position for Shikai release. Minato quickly appeared at her side, I'll help you Baya-chan. He then raised one hand at Ichigo and a zero formed in his palm. Baikuya spoke then first word, scatter, but then cloth appeared over her sword, and Minato avoided a blast of Kido. Soon two women appeared one had a lighter version of Ichigo's hair color and green eyes but the other had dark skin, violet hair, and cat-like yellow eyes. Bikaya was shocked, it's you. Yuki Take spoke the names of the two women, Yuruchi, Sensei, holding cell. Renji was resting from his battle with Ichigo, and when he woke up he was greeted by his Zanpakudo, Zabamaru in spirit form. After a few banters Zabamaru reveals to Renji they are all healed and ready to face Anjetsu again. But Renji reveals that the young Ryoka is no longer their enemy. So Zabamaru asked Renji, then who is your enemy who will you fight now? Renji was deep in thought. Repentance Tower. Yuruchi, Sensei. Yuruchi Shihoin. The Kachiki matriarch stared at her old friend, it's been a long time over a century I believe, I thought you were dead. Yuruchi eyed Baikuya before she saw Ichigo. What happened to Ichigo? Minato spoke. I did it the twerp actually thought he could fight me. Masaki had instantly gone to her son's side, Ichigo, my little Ichigo. She then started to heal him with Kido. Then I will return the favor. Minato explained, I've heard of you Yuruchi Shihoin the Flash Goddess. I even heard you and Baya Chan once played tag. How about taking me on? I am a Flash Master too. Yuruchi smirked, my you talk big, but let's see how you back it up. She then disappeared and Minato did as well, but he disappeared with a yellow light. 
Yuruchi appeared behind Minato, but he quickly turned around and tried to slash Yuruchi with his claws. But Yuruchi appeared far away with a chigo but, then in the blink of an eye, Minato flashed right in front the ex-captain with a yellow burst. Minato grinned with one clawed hand raised, he tried to strike her but missed. Yuruchi smirked as she appeared on a building along with Masaki holding a chigo. I'll admit you're much faster than Baya-chan, but you still can't catch me. Yuruchi had to admit Baikuya has good taste in men. Oh really? But then a familiar voice behind spoke. To Yuruchi's shock there was Minato right beside her, but how? He was still standing beside Baikuya, then the Minato beside Baikuya vanished with a yellow light. It was an afterimage. The blonde Espada smirked, when I was alive I was the fastest shinobi in the elemental countries, not even Mito guy with his gates open could hope to catch me. Yuruchi was stunned, this man is unbelievable, he's actually faster than me. Baikuya had a slight smirk on her face, well Yuruchi it looks like my husband is the new god of flash. Minato spoke, you can go free, I just wanted to test you. Yuruchi and Masaki instantly flashed away. Minato then flashed to his wife again. Minato-kun you are incredible. Baikuya wrapped her arms around him. Minato grinned, naturally. So shall we go and find our Sachi? Yes, I'm ready to see our son. Baikuya and Minato then turned to leave. Yuki takes spoke, Baikuya wait. Where are you going? What about them? I'm going with my husband to find our son I have no interest in them. Do as you please. She and her husband soon flashed away. Yuki take then sighed. Boy at least with that man here she's more lifelike. Soon Rukia collapsed from the spiritual pressure. Hanataro ran to her worried, but Kane appeared in front of him. Sorry kid I'm taking her. Poor Rukia I'm guessing the orange-haired kid she left him to try and protect him ugh. Looks like I'll need to retrain her. It looks like she was focusing the whole time I don't blame her. Yuki takes sight again, oh well I guess I better call them out. Hey, Sentaro, Kiyan, come on out now. Soon his two-thirds seats appeared. After a brief argument they both stood to attention. Yuki takes sight he did truly care for those two, but they could be such trouble sometimes. Soon he ordered Kiyan to go tell Anahana and Sentaro to place Rukia back in the cell they both were both to obey until they saw Kayan. They both froze in shock. Kayan thought, Central 46 really is ordering this? This can't be right. What the hell has happened? A guy goes away for a few centuries and everything is all screwed up. Kayan spoke, Captain I'll take her. He then disappeared along with Rukia. Sentaro was stuttering as was Kiyan until she remembered what Yuki take ordered and went to fetch Captain Anahana. Yuki take side, at least I know Kayan will take care of her. Hanataro was speechless. You're probably wondering why I'm letting you live. Yuki take said. Hanataro spoke quietly. Why yes. Why wouldn't I? We aren't sure who killed Aizen but you Ryoka may have the answers we're looking for. I can't kill you until the investigation's over. Yuki take turned to look at the timid boy. But more importantly what you did may be questionable. But you were trying to save one of my subordinates. I won't just stand by and watch you get killed. With Uryu and Oraham. Uryu and Oraham had managed to steal some Soul Reaper outfits Oraham's clever suggestion. They managed to fool them and were trying to head to the Repentance Tower where they thought Rukia was but then a man with spiky black hair and aqua green eyes flew by them the two Ryoka only caught a glimpse but saw Rukia in his arms. Oraham spoke, Uryu kun that was. The Quincy nods, yes he has Rukia. The two decide to follow the man with Kayan. Kayan used Shunpo and flew through the Serate listening as Rukia explained about her life since his death. Kayan whistled, wow, you really went through a lot Rukia I'm sorry I wanted to come back sooner, but I needed to train first. Rukia nodded, yes Kayan don't know. She still couldn't believe he was alive, but here he was right in front of her. Kayan was deep in thought. What happened to this place in the past few centuries? Near 6th Division Barracks. Naruto had wandered away from Masaki and the others and made it to the 6th Division Barracks but then he sensed a sinister presence behind him and turned to face a man with messy dark blue hair and green eyes. The man wore a black kimono and had a sword like many of the people Naruto saw. He even wore a white hiori. The man smirked and drew his sword. Control their mind Seiman. His sword glowed purple. Naruto felt a strange sensation and collapsed. The man then picked up the young blonde Kichiki air. Hmm, you have incredible spirit energy for a kid you will make a fine solider for me. He shunpoed away. With Yurichi in Masaki, Yurichi is slightly exhausted, phew. 
That's the cost of being away for a few centuries, a couple of hundred shunpo and I'm exhausted I must be finally getting old. Masaki giggled, no, no Yuruchi you're just slightly out of practice. The two shared a slight laugh before turning to face the orange-haired youth on the ground. Get up Ichigo you must become even stronger. When you awaken my little Ichi I'll start teaching you about the true power of both your Zampakudo and Sunkido. After Ichigo woke up he had a fit until Yurichi and his mother explained to him about what they would teach him. In the secret training ground, Yurichi explained, Ichigo we don't have enough to wait for your wounds to fully heal. I know you're in pain right now, but please try and bear with it. Ichigo was determined to learn he then drew both his Zenpakudo and released Hinatahim into Shikai state. Masaki asked Yuruchi to allow her to teach Ichigo Bankai and Sunkido, since he's her son and Yuruchi will teach him Shunpo. Ichigo did you know Zenjetsu is a constant release Zenpakudo? Masaki stood across from her son while asking him this. It's a what? By constant release do you mean like Kinpachis? Ichigo was surprised. I see you weren't made aware by them were you? Masaki sighed. Both your Zampakudo have a second release state. The hybrid informed her son. Ichigo was shocked. The first release is called Shikai. The second is called Bankai. It's mandatory for a captain to have mastered both. With one exception, each and every captain has mastered Shikai and Bankai. Ichigo was surprised. One exception. Kenpachi Zaraki sweetie. Masaki sighed. Masaki then told him, in the editor history of the Soul Society, Kenpachi Zaraki is the only person to achieve captain rank without either Shikai or Bankai. The Gate 13 valued his fighting prowess and dedication that much. But of course you learned that from fighting him. So mom if you're a former captain? Then does that mean? That's right I have mastered both Shikai and Bankai. Now on the terms of your Zanpakudo's fighting ability, the difference between Shikai and Bankai usually depend on the user's talents, but it's essentially 5 to 10 times greater. Ichigo was stunned. Incredible isn't it? Masaki smiled, but told Ichigo sternly, however due to the huge difference even for someone with talent, it could easily take more than 10 years to master Bankai. What? Yuruchi then spoke, when your mother says 10 or more years she means normal training. Masaki nods, we're going to use a different method with you Ichigo you'll learn Bankai in just 3 days. With Momo. Momo had been sitting in her squad's holding cell, but when Renjiku showed up, she handed her a letter which she claims was written by Aizen but was forged by the villain. The villain hoped to create chaos and disorder among the captains. Momo later after reading the letter broke out and headed for the 3rd division barracks, not believing what the letter said. Now she faced her dearest and oldest friend Tishiro Hitsugaya. With Tashiro. Tashiro couldn't believe what he was hearing his childhood friend Momo claims Aizen said in his letter. That Tashiro himself was the one who was threatening the Soul Society. Now Momo attacks Tashiro. Tashiro tries to reason with her. But it doesn't work she's too confused and distraught to think straight. Then Tashiro sees Jin grinning. Tashiro growls and spoke. I see this is your doing too, huh, Ichimaru. He then dived down with his hand on his Zanpakudo. But then Momo intercepts Tashiro curses inwardly, damn it, I can't avoid her in midair. He had no choice and struck out at the 5th division lieutenant, sending her to the ground in a heap. Tashiro looked at her worried, Momo. My who would have guessed the captain of 10th division could be so cruel? Jin shook his head, would you have to hit her so hard? The poor little thing was suffering. Tashiro growled again, Aizen wasn't enough for you. You had to hurt Momo too didn't you? Her hands are bleeding from gripping her sword so tightly. The young Taicho looked at his childhood friend. Jin chuckled, I have no idea what you're talking about. Tashiro then released an icy blue aura, I gave you a warning Jin that, if you ever made Momo bleed I'd kill you. Jin sighed and his own violet aura came into existence, Captain of 10th Division, if you insist on drawing your sword here, I'll have no choice but to stop you. The two auras grew bigger and caused the area to quake from the power. Kira was shocked see Captain. Jin spoke, move aside Kira you don't want to die do you? Tashiro spoke out, don't be stupid, just moving aside isn't enough. He then pointed outward with his sword, leave, and when you can't see us anymore keep going. If you're within three Rai then I can't guarantee you won't end up dead. The youngest captain then leapt into the air. He then spoke his Shikai release, rain over the frosted heavens, Heimran Meru. A dragon made of frozen water formed around him from his sword. The clear sky was now cloudy. Kira was amazed, amazing spiritual pressure so dense that it's capable of altering the weather. So this is Captain Hitsugaya's ultimate water ice type Zanpakudo Heimran Meru. Tashiro then waved his sword and the dragon charged at Jin. Kira had no chance against the water. 
Jin managed to dodge, but Tishiro appeared and used another swipe. Jin used his own Zampakudo to try and endure the hit, but then the young white-haired captain appeared behind him. Jin's arm was now frozen and immobile from the chain on Tishiro's sword. Jin then turned his head and opened his eyes fully to reveal slitted crimson eyes, shoot to kill Shinso his Zampakudo suddenly extended and burst through his captain's Hayori, heading straight for the shock Tishiro. He ducked unfortunately now it headed straight for Hinamori. Jin spoke, are you sure want to dodge it, the girl will die, Tishiro watched with horror, Momo, but then his sword was blocked by another, Renjiku appeared with her own Zampakudo blocking Jin's, Tishiro was surprised, Matsumoto, Renjiku spoke, sorry captain, I had gone back to our squad barrack to wait for you when I sensed Heimrenmeru's Ryatsu and had to come back. Captain Ichimeru please withdraw your sword or you will face both of us, Renjiku asked. Sakyoku Hill Training Ground. Yuruchi watched as Ichigo stretched out his limbs he had been training all day yesterday against his Zampakudo he had managed to pass Zenjetsu's test and now was battling against him to him. Soon Ichigo was done with his stretching and hopped up. Okay I'm warmed up now. He then placed his shirt back on. Now where'd Yuruchi and mom go? I'm ready to begin. Yuruchi was thinking whether or not to extend his training. His combat skills and spirit energy increased dramatically. Masaki managed to teach Ichigo some keto. Yuruchi thought. I wonder if I should extend his training. Where did Masaki go? Senzaku Tower. Rukia had been recaptured when Captain Tosin managed to use his Shikai to disable Kayin. Rukia was surprised at what the guard told her. What did you say? The lead guard spoke, you didn't understand me, then I'll say it again Rukia Kachiki your execution has been changed once again it will be tomorrow. 4th Division Infirmary. Tashiro and Renjiku were looking over Momo. Tashiro spoke, Matsumoto thank you for coming. Dot. Dot if you didn't Momo would be dead. Renjiku looked at her captain, it's alright captain they both thought back to last night after Jin left. Jin that habit of yours hasn't changed. Just then they saw a hell butterfly, and then there was an announcement, attention all captains and lieutenants. This is our latest development. The final time of Rukia Kachiki's execution shall be 29 hours from now. Tishiro was shocked and then turned to leave. Renjiku noticed Captain, she wondered what was going through her captain's mind. Tishiro spoke, Matsumoto we have to stop the execution. Soon the two of them headed for Sakyoku Hill. Sakyoku Hill. Two people sensed powerful spiritual pressure. Dot, dot the taller person spoke, so that's his Riatsu. Training ground. Ichigo was battling Hintehem, and Yuruchi felt like something ominous was coming on the horizon. Then the top exploded stopping Ichigo's battle with his Zampakudo. So this is where you were. A familiar voice spoke. So those are your Zampakudo training for Bankaye? You look like you're having fun. Soon a familiar redhead lieutenant came out from the smoke. Mind if I join in? Ichigo was shocked. Renji. I know you're thinking what am I doing here right? Renji grinned. It's nothing there's just not much more time left and I need a place to train. Ichigo was surprised, not much more time left. I'll tell him they've changed the date of Rukia's execution. Dot. Dot it will be carried out at noon tomorrow. Yuruchi, Ichigo, Zenjetsu, and Hin Taham were shocked at the revelation. Renji spoke, as much as I hate saying it I'm not yet strong enough to save her yet. Relax I won't get in your way. His sword glowed I already know how to externalize my Zampakudo. A baboon with a snake tail appeared next to him. Yuruchi spoke, there's no way he can fully master Bankai by then. Ichigo spoke, Yuruchi are you sure you should say that? This training was your and mom's idea, so you don't get to give up. But Ichigo if you don't achieve Bankai by tomorrow. Ichigo told her, mom I told both of you I don't care what happens if I don't. He then pressed his broken sword to his palm, if tomorrow's the deadline, then I'll just take care of it today. With Rukia, Rukia was lying on the floor of her prison thinking about what to say for her last request. Rukia spoke, so tomorrow I die but maybe I could ask them to let Ichigo and his friends go home. I am a Kachiki after all, so maybe they'll honor my request. She then was thinking on her reaction to the news. Rukia knew it was because of the dream she had the dream of that night, the night Kei and Shiba had seemingly been killed by her hands. But then she remembered it was alive. But however she still blamed herself for him becoming half hollow, so she would allow herself to die. With Baikuya. Minato told Baikuya he'll go look for their son, I want to explore this place by a chan I'll find Naruto. So after the two shared a quick kiss he flashed away. The 6th division captain was walking when Yukitake came up and called her name Baikuya. There's trouble. There's no need to tell me Yukitake the hell butterfly has already informed me. Oh so you already know? 
Baikuya nodded, yes, so what of it? Yuki Take was shocked, w what? Baikuya didn't even face her fellow captain, if Rukia is to be executed tomorrow, then I accept it. She then started to walk off, do not bother me with such trivial matters, but Yuki Take grabbed her Hayori. Why you're heartless, didn't you hear me? Don't you even care? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. By tomorrow Rukia will be suddenly his sickness started to affect him again, and he coughed a bit. Baikuya glanced at him and spoke, don't strain yourself Yuki take you'll only shorten your life. The 6th division captain continued, you've already let one of your people die once before two or three more make no difference. And in any case Rukia is a member of my clan you are not the one who decides whether she lives or dies. She then looked back at the 13th division captain, do not do anything foolish. Baikuya then flashed away to find her son. Yuki Take then reminisced about his former Lieutenant Kayin, knowing he wouldn't just let Rukia die and even now when he was half hollow he still tried to save her, only to be overpowered by Tosin 4th squad had been called to pick up the injured Kayin. Yuki Take spoke, a lone captain making a fuss won't be enough to sway the tribunal. Yuki Take then went to his barracks to pick up something. Rukia once again relived that night when she had to kill Kayin to save him, yet he came back as a half hollow soul reaper and would probably be tried as a hollow and executed. Rukia thought sadly, I did everything for myself I'm not worth shedding blood over a chigo, Kane don't know. Next morning, Rukia was dragged off by the guards, Sakyoku Hill, Renjiku, Tashiro were standing there as were Jin and Izuru, Squad 11 Barracks. Two low-level guards were arguing about stuff when they heard a rumbling and saw their captain Kenpachi running by they, tried to apis him only to watch as he ran by. Ikaku came by and scolded them Yumichika threatened them they were shocked to see Makizo Aramaki with them. Kenpachi asked Orahum for directions Yuchiru, headbutted her excitedly and told Kenpachi the way. Unfortunately Yuchiru sucked at directions Kenpachi was so annoyed he decided to just trust his instincts. In the holding cell Uryu was babbling about a butterfly and Ganju mentioned about it, which escalated into a slight argument with Uryu then they were stopped when Kenpachi came crashing in and with Orahum, much to their shock. Sakyoku Hill, training ground. Renji has finished his training and has achieved Bankai he sheathed his sword ready to leave, all right I'm going. Ichigo spoke. See you later Renji. As Renji walked by he asked, Yuruchi will he really be ready in time? Yuruchi didn't know herself. Renji explained, I'm not asking if he'll be killed. Dot. Dot I can see he's come a long way. I'm asking whether or not he can achieve Bankai. Ichigo faced him Tehem and Zenjetsu, both at once he's already achieved Bankai last night, while Yuruchi and Masaki were gone investigating he's training now, to extend the amount of time he can hold Bankai. Yuruchi told Renji that she truly believed he could achieve Bankai. Ichigo overheard them and chuckled in his mind, they don't know I already achieved Bankai last night. 6th Division Barracks Baikuya was standing in front of a shrine, gazing at the picketer of her first late husband Baikuya cared for both her husbands equally she never preferred one over the other. Captain Kachiki it's time to head to Sakyoku Hill. Very well. Baikuya closed the shrine, I'll go right now Hasano-kun. She also wondered, Minato-kun I wonder where you are now in the Sarate? Saku Hill. Minato was hidden on the hill, Baiya-chan told me this is the ground where her younger sister will die I can't just let this happen. I know Baiya-chan regrets not being able to save Rukia herself I'll do it for you Baiya-chan. The Siro Espada stayed hidden under a Jinjutsu. 7th Division Barracks. A man with an afro and sunglasses, raced to his captain's quarters he slipped, but managed to turn it into a sliding bow. He spoke apologetically Captain Sir, I apologize, I did Susan and Iba fell asleep on the toilet, for that I'll slit my own stomach. A tall man wearing an iron helmet and gloves spoke, you have no need I'm ready. He is Sajin Kamamura captain of 7th division he wears the helmet to hide his acutal face due to being shunned by the others when he was younger. But you hadn't needed to concern yourself to Tsuzumin. Iba spoke, sir I don't follow. Don't lie you thought I had doubts about the execution. So you tried to delay my departure so I would have time to think. Iba nods. Yes sir it's true. Sajin assured his lieutenant, don't worry I have no such doubts everything I do is out of gratitude to Captain Commander Yamamoto. He explained, due to my appearance I was shunned by all but Captain Commander Yamamoto took me, and the least I can do is repay his kindness, I have no doubts. Should he ever need my life he shall have it. Sajin then asked someone behind him, how do you feel Tosin? A dark-skinned captain with braided dark violet hair and wearing a visor over his blind eyes was seen standing there with his own lieutenant. 
Tosin spoke. I'm doing just fine of course the only path in these blind eyes is the path of the least bloodshed I walk the same path as you Kamamura. Second Division Barracks. People were discussing about the execution dot. Dot but stopped when Soifin and her lieutenant came walking by. The lieutenant snorted while eating a bag of chips. He was a tall ugly looking man wearing a scarf, as well as the usual Soul Reaper outfit. He is named Amida Marichiyo. Marichiyo spoke, they're idiots eh captain? Talking about the whether the execution is right or wrong. Fools the execution doesn't concern me I only care about my honor and duties as a Taicho of the Gate 13. The second division Taicho spoke emotionlessly, anyone who gets in the way of that is my enemy. And I kill my enemies it's that simple. Marichiyo was picking his nose. I see. That goes to you too Amida. He gazed down at his captain. She spoke threateningly, get in my way and you are my enemy. Marichiyo acknowledged that. Why yes captain. Hidden. Aizen who was thought to dead was alive and investigating something, Wiyu I'm glad I managed to use Kayoka Sajetsu into fooling that bastard, into thinking he actually killed me, he's dangerous and I have a feeling he has something to do with Captain Harako's disappearance. 8th Division Barracks. Kairaku was humming to himself while chewing on a straw. Nano came up on a ladder. Captain, what are you doing here? You need to get ready. Nano I have a little problem can I tell you about it? What is it? Nano looked at her captain before asking. Well I decided to chew on this straw thinking it'd make me look cool but it's probably poisonous. The inside of my move, mouth, it, is, numb, Kairaku explained. Nanao groaned frustrated, then take it out. She annoyed swiped the straw from his mouth. Nana, what should I do? Nana spoke. Why are you asking me? She added. Regardless of what I say you'll do whatever you like. Kairaku gazed at her. Don't worry I'll remain a few steps behind you, so I don't get caught up in your mess. Kairaku complained. Oh no not again. He sat up. I'll be the only one who gets scolded by Yamajiji. Sakyoku Hill. The first and second divisions have arrived. Courtyard. Yuchiru ended up getting the group lost. Ikaku complained to the others. Now you see why I don't like letting the lieutenant lead us. Yuchiru got upset and started biting Ikaku in the head making, and it escalated into an argument. Yumichika spoke. Captain, that smell. Kenpachi nodded. Yeah, quit sneaking around and come on out. Captains shouldn't be hiding their spirit energy. A voice spoke. What a big mouth you have. Do you realize what you're doing? Soon four soul reapers made themselves known the captains and lieutenants of the 7th and 9th divisions. Tosin asked. Where are you going with the Ryoka? Have you lost your honor with your defeat Captain Zaraki? Aramaki freaks when he sees the Captain Kamamura, Captain Kanam, Lieutenant Aiba, Lieutenant Hisagi. Four Captain Class Officers. Yumichika spoke. Calm down Aramaki. We outnumber them. Aramaki spoke. It's not about the numbers. Vale. Kenpachi spoke. Quiet. He smirked. Who said I'd let you fight? He then turned his attention on his opponents. Four against one A. Eh? Not enough to really test my sword, but why not? The four were surprised and then jumped down into the courtyard to face the rogue battle hungry captain. Kamamura spoke. Four against one isn't good enough. Do you mean to take on all four of us by yourself? Kamamura released more spiritual pressure. You're good but I believe you are overrating yourself Kenpachi Zaraki. Kenpachi just drew his sword. Ah uh, shut up and just fight. He pointed his battle-worn sword at the small group. He released some spiritual pressure. Come at me now from all sides and you might just get lucky and actually manage cut me. Aramaki asked. Captain Zaraki what should we do? Kenpachi spoke. You're the way. Move. Aramaki had a depressed cloud over him. He didn't have to say it like that. Yuchiru spoke. Come on Mustachio. Aramaki gazed at the childlike lieutenant. Mustachio? Is that my new nickname? Yuchiru continued Kenny's having fun. We shouldn't get in the way. She then waved to Kenpachi. Kenny. We're going to find Ichi. Don't have too much fun. Kenpachi didn't turn but acknowledged. Don't worry. I'll be there. Yuchiru then dragged Oraham. Come on Jiggles, Muscles, Gorilla, Skinny, and Mustachio. Let's go. Or you wondered, am I skinny? Oraham spoke. Be but. Yuchiru dragged her off. It's okay. Let's go. Yuri and Chad ran behind. Oraham complained. Ow. Yuchiru, you're pulling too hard. Aramaki or Mustachio ran to keep up. Wait don't leave me here. Tosin stepped up. You'll be there? Was that a bluff or were you serious? He then told Kenpachi. Either way you not only lost your honor but your sanity as well Zaraki. Kenpachi smirked sadistically. Has sanity? Sorry I don't recall ever having anything like that. With Yuchiru and the others. Yuchiru, Oraham, Oryu Chad, and Aramaki were all running. 
Orahim spoke. Yuchiru, are you sure about this leaving Mr. Zaraki behind? Yuchiru smiled and explained, don't worry, Kenny won't lose whomever he fights. Orahim was surprised at the confidence Yuchiru had in her captain. Yuchiru, Aramaki was thinking, geez I can't believe this mere Ryoka girl has been addressing the lieutenant by her first name, she has guts. He then turned to ask, what do you think third seat matter him? But Akaku and Yumichika weren't there. Back in the courtyard, Hisagi and Iba stepped up, Iba spoke, Captain, Hisagi finished, let us handle this, Kenpachi spoke bored, fools, I thought I said to come at me all at once, another voice was heard, I knew it'd be like this, fools, soon Yumichika and Akaku appeared, Akaku spoke, I guess we'll have to step in right Captain, Kenpachi spoke, wait what are you two still doing here? Ikaku pointed to the two lieutenants and yelled, Listen here, don't think you two lowly lieutenants will have the privilege to face a captain. He turned and gave Kenpachi a thumbs up, right captain? Kenpachi spoke, humph, so you two want to fight fine you can have them, but take your fight elsewhere, get in the way and I'll kill you myself. Ikaku spoke, yes, sir. Oh boy fight, don't fight, take us, don't take us on. I gazed at Ikaku, since when are you allowed to talk to me like that Ikaku? Ikaku scoffed, I don't need speech lessons from a coward who jumped ship because he couldn't become lieutenant of 11th division Iba, Iba spoke, Ikaku, the bold third seat stopped him, save it, let's go somewhere else I don't want my captain to kill me, Yumichika spoke, me neither, shall we go too? Hisagi spoke, do what you want it doesn't matter, the four then disappeared using Shunpo, Kenpachi smirked, finally, now we can fight. He looked at his fellow captains, there's only half of you now but how could I refuse my subordinates' wishes, at least this could be my morning workout. Kamamura placed one hand on his Zanpakuto, still talking big, that's what makes me think you're overrating yourself Zaraki. He drew his sword and broke the ground. Kenpachi was actually impressed. Hmm, you broke the ground with just the pressure of your sword not too bad. Kenpachi's visible eye widened as a massive fist holding a sword crashed down on him. Hidden on one of the building tops, Masaki appeared in a shunpo and reduced her rear yoku to near non-existent she was watching this battle. Masaki thought, Kenpachi Zaraki in all history of the Soul Society, you are the only one to achieve the captain rank, without requiring Bankai or even knowing the name of your Zampakuto. Back in the courtyard, Tosin leapt into the air, take two steps back Kamamura, he might still attack, I'll take away his limbs. He then drew his Zanpakudo which was vibrating, Nishiki, Suzumushi Benehiko, Cricket second movement, Crimson flying locusts, he then waved his sword leaving a trail, and the trail became a group of blades which rained down on Kenpachi. Kamamura spoke, it is over, not even the fearsome Kenpachi Zaraki could survive that, there won't be any trace of him left, but to their shock standing there impaled with the blades of Tosin's Shikai, but still very much alive was Kenpachi Zaraki, both Kamamura and Tosin were shocked, Kamamura couldn't believe it, it can't be, he survived my Tenkin and Tosin's Benehiko, and he's still standing. Kenpachi then pulled out one of the blades, ho oh, hum I take it back, this won't even wake me up, Kenpachi then gazed at them, I'm gonna chop you both to pieces and end this now, near the repentance tower, Renji was running through the Serate heading for the giant repentance tower, Renji had this thought, hold on Rukia I'm coming to save you, but unknown to Renji Baikuya was standing on one of the rooftops watching him, Renji had attacked the other members of his squad including one called Rikichi, Renji now had memories of his past going through his mind, almost there it won't be long now before I have you out of there, I won't let them just put you to death Rukia, Renji turned a corner, but then froze as a massive spiritual pressure froze him sweat dripped down from his face, Renji looked up to see his captain, Baikuya was standing on top of the building behind him, Renji spoke, Captain Kachiki, Baikuya asked, where are you going Renji? Renji told her, I'm going to save Rukia, Baikuya spoke in a calm tone, you may not, the Kichiki head knew her husband was more than powerful enough to do the job, Minato-kun I'm counting on you then once we save Rukia, we'll be able to find our son, Renji spoke, I will, is there no way you'll let me pass, Baikuya spoke coldly, I won't repeat it, she then vanished, Renji knew what was coming, I know this move, sure enough Baikuya appeared behind him and was about to strike, but then Renji parried and countered her strike, Renji spoke, that was senka plus or minus, flash blossom a flash step with a spin for striking the enemy from behind, it can destroy the Saketsu and Hakusui with a single thrust, it's your favorite move, 
He then explained, I saw it several times before in my mind using my logic I foresaw your moves. Renji exclaimed confidently, Captain your blade can no longer kill me. Baikuya spoke, you're rather talkative, what makes you so positive? She then added, did you really think you could surpass my blade with that? She then positioned her sword into Shikai release posture, scatter Sinban's Akura, but before her sword could even glow, Renji struck first halting her sword's release with his own Shikai without calling its name. Renji spoke, I told you before your sword can't kill me. He then explained, it's not because I became a lieutenant long before I even joined the Gate 13, there was one person I always dreamed of surpassing. Renji looked to Baikuya, that person was you captain. Baikuya spoke actually surprised, you can release your Zampakudo without calling its name then you've. Renji retracted Zabamaru and then spoke, I'm going to surpass you. He then held Zabamaru upside down, Benkai. Baikuya was surprised as Renji glowed with red Ryoku. The spirit energy was strong enough to create debris it swirled around Renji. Soon Renji was revealed, but a baboon fur cape covered his shoulders on, his right shoulder was a skull. His sword had morphed into a giant snake with a red mane around its head it curled around its wielder ready to attack. Renji called out, Hi ho Zabamaru, Baikuya spoke, I didn't know you achieved Bankai. Renji told her, Why would you, you pay no heed to what's beneath you, his hand clenched on the tip of the tail. I told you I'm going to save Rukia, Baikuya informed him, I will not repeat myself. Renji then said, If you won't let me pass I'll have to kill you. Baikuya spoke, Impossible, you could not even force me to one knee. Renji then stepped forward and swung his arm, and the snake shot at the captain hissing Baikuya avoided it, but Renji continued his attacks. Baikuya used flash step to avoid the snake's jaws. Hi ho Zabamaru destroyed many of the buildings. After a while the snake finally was pushing Baikuya towards the ground. Baikuya used her own sword to block its jaws. Dot I see it's worthy of being called Bankai. However it ends here. She spoke her Shikai release, scatter Sinbonzakura. Her own Shikai reduced the snake to pieces. Baikuya landed perfectly but then to her shock the snake repaired itself. Renji was unharmed, and Haiho Zabamaru was fully together again the snake was ready for another round. Sinbonzakura a thousand blade fragments too small to see. They reflect the light as they rise and resemble cherry blossoms fluttering in the breeze. I know all about it. His next words were full of confidence, sorry. But Haiho Zabamaru's joints are held together by my Riatsu your blade can't destroy it. I separated the joints to evade all 1000 of your blades. Baikuya was showing visible surprise at her lieutenant dramatic increase in skills. Renji spoke. Surprised? In other words I can see every one of them. He then attacked again, and this time forced Baikuya on one knee. Renji told her, you're down on one knee, he exclaimed, I will defeat you, Kachiki Baikuya, let's draw the curtain on this duel, Baikuya then rose up, draw the curtain eh, very well, she had her hand on Sinbon's Akura's hilt ready to unsheathe him, I'll draw it with my blade, Renji spoke again, did you forget, what I said earlier, I can see your moves, he then raised his arm, it's going to be my sword, he makes the snake charge again, that draws the curtain. The snake came close to Baikuya, but then the Kachiki had then raised one hand with two fingers pointed out, HADO number 33, Sakatsui. A blue blast of spirit energy shot out of her fingers. Renji managed to block it, but was shocked. That was a Kido and a level 31, she can do a powerful Kido without using the chant. Renji then attacks, you thought you could blind me with that, but he missed. Damn missed her, he pulled Haiho Zabamaru back. Baikuya appeared behind him, you miscalculated, I didn't cast that keto spell to blind you I did it to disrupt your Bankai. Baikuya explains, the problem with Bankai is its size in proportion with spiritual pressure, because Bankai is so big it takes an additional 10 years of training after achieving Bankai to master all its movements. Baikuya informed her lieutenant, Renji you are not ready to use Bankai in battle. Renji got angry. So what? I know that. Lucky my Zampakudo is slow. He then swung his arm. A missing segment or two won't make a difference. Baikuya then raised her hand again. B-A-K-U-D-O number 61. Rikajukurum. Her index finger flashed. Renji gasped as the six light rods rammed into his midsection paralyzing him. Renji thought, damn. Baikuya spoke. You should have just put down your sword. Did you really think you could defeat me? She then held her sword out the blade aimed to the ground. Surely you haven't forgotten that I too have achieved Bankai. Baikuya then dropped her sword, Bankai. Her sword sunk into the ground and ripples of spirit energy came from the place it dropped. Soon a row of a thousand giant swords rose up on each side of the captain. 
Baikuya spoke, scatter Senbon's Akura Kajayashi. In a storm of countless petal-like blades, Renji was now severely wounded he fell to the ground, with blood flowing from him the buildings were totaled. Baikuya spoke, shall I tell you the difference between us? Its status. Your bite will not touch me ever. Back at the courtyard, while Akaku and Yumichika were getting ready to fight their opponents, Kenpachi stood there facing Tosin and Kamamura, soon he had plucked all the blades out of him. Kenpachi then detected some Riyatsu rising, this spiritual pressure, I don't know who it belongs to, but it seems this isn't the only fight in town. Kenpachi grinned his usual frightening grin, I like it, it's finally getting festive around here, isn't it? Back in the Serate near the repentant cell. A thousand steel blades rising from one's feet a storm of blade shards too numerous to comprehend, one cannot track them much less evade them, Baikuya was explaining to her fallen lieutenant about her bankai, she continued dot it's like watching the wind blow, all that stands before them becomes dust, Baikuya then told her lieutenant, you should be proud despite taking my bankai you've kept your human body. Renji then began to twitch his red hair spilling out due to the blades destroying the band that kept it in the ponytail. What, you're still alive? She then spoke. Don't move you'll only shorten your life. Baikuya informed him. Renji began to try, and move Zabamaru returned to sealed form. It's not over yet. Renji spoke weakly. He rose up. I can still fight. Renji then charged at Baikuya. Baikuya then formed swords of pink spirit energy. Didn't you hear me? I told you not to move. The swords then shot down and struck Renji causing even more damage to the already severely hurt lieutenant. Baikuya spoke, I give you credit for at least being able to breathe after enduring my bankai, she then drew one of the swords, but if you move again, I won't hold back with my blade, I'll turn your body to dust you may have noticed that your bankai is gone, the disappearance of the your bankai against your will is a sign of near death, Baikuya then formed a group of the pink blades, now I ask you once more do you still insist trying to save Rukia, the swords all pointed to Renji ready to impale him at a mental command, Renji was realizing how hopeless it was, I can't dot dot breath it feels like her spiritual pressure is crushing me I can't even move a finger damn, it she was beyond me I had no chance at beating this woman, but then a memory flashed at Ichigo in the same position in the training ground, Zanjetsu stood in front of a fallen Ichigo, what getting up again Ichigo, the orange haired soul reaper rose up, he smirked, Renji smirked, of course, Baikuya then dispersed her swords, what, Renji spoke, I swore I'd save her, Baikuya was surprised, you swore, to whom, Renji struggled and even crushed one of the swords in him, to no one, but my soul, he and Ichigo yelled at the same time, Renji was on his feet again, he then aimed with his sealed Zabamaru and struck, but when blood flowed it was mostly Renji's, Renji then fell again, and this time didn't get up, damn it, Baikuya then removed her scarf and placed it over her lieutenant, well done, it seems your bite did reach me after all, bridge 2 from the repentant cell. The guards were leading Rukia across the bridge to the execution ground, when Rukia stiffened as she felt a familiar spiritual pressure disappear. The younger Kachiki went wide-eyed, Renji, no I can't really tell because I'm too far away, but that spirit energy that vanished, had to be Renji's. Rukia cried out, W why did you, Renji, but then footsteps were heard as Jinichimaru, the creepy fox-like captain of squad 3, made his untimely appearance. Rukia stared at him with distant and fear. Jin spoke, hello Rukia how are you? Rukia spoke, Jin Ichimaru. Jin then scolded, my such bad manners, you're as rude as always, it's not Jin it's Captain Ichimaru, you keep that up and your sister will scold you. Rukia then apologized, I'm sorry Captain Ichimaru. Jin chuckled, oh no did you think I was serious, I won't tell her. He asked, it's okay we're friends aren't we? Rukia narrowed her eyes, Jin asked, what? Rukia asked, what are you doing here? Jin then told her. Oh nothing important just thought I'd take a talk and tease you for a bit. Rukia then shivered as she remembered when she first laid eyes on this man. Jin Ichimaru I hated this man before I joined the 13 court guard squads when Isama became the captain of squad 6 sometimes, when we were walking together this man, who became the captain of squad 3 at the same time, would come over and talk to one Isama. A casual observer would have seen nothing out of the ordinary, just two captains talking their conversations were nothing special but that wasn't what I saw. The first time I saw this man I broke into a cold sweat his fingers his mouth his eyes they all reminded me of a snake. Rukia's thoughts continued, he was talking to my sister but it felt like his hands were around my throat, I couldn't even blink, I hated him, I don't know why, 
But something inside was repulsed by everything about him. No matter how many times I spoke with him, those feelings never went away even now. What's wrong? Rukia snapped out of her thoughts from Jin speaking up. He spoke again, you look distracted. Rukia spoke, forgive me, those feelings persist. Jin chuckled, oh, I almost forgot, he's still alive, Renji that is. Rukia yelled, what? So she then realized, it was him, it's faint. But if I focus hard enough I can feel it, but if Renji's left like that. Jin spoke her thought out loud, he'll die you know. He explained, poor Renji and all because he tried to save you. Rukia yelled, I don't believe you, you're lying, why would Renji? Jin turned to her, are you afraid? Rukia was shocked by his question, of what? Jin asked, you don't want Renji and the others to die do you? When you fear for the lives of those you care for doesn't the thought of death get more terrifying? He then offered, shall I help you? The guards got all freaked, see Captain Ichimaru, what are you saying? Jin asked again, well, if I choose to I could free you right now, you, Renji, and your Ryoka friends too. Rukia was shocked, what is he saying, has he gone mad, what would he gain from helping me, what would he gain from helping Ichigo and Renji, no, maybe he, Jin walked over and patted her on the head, just kidding, he then turned and walked off while waving, bye bye, Rukia I'll see you at the Sekyoku, Rukia thought, I thought I'd given up hope I thought I lost all reason to live, I had no regrets I even believed I wasn't afraid to die, but I was shaken by having something like fate dangled in front of me, it made me want to live my resolve crumbled, Rukia screamed, courtyard, Tosin and Kamamura both charged and aimed a strike at Kenpachi only to be shocked as he blocked both. Kenpachi spoke, how boring, quit being so afraid of every attack, he then kicked Tosin in the stomach and flipped Kamamura onto the ground, Kenpachi looked bored, is this all you can do, and you call yourselves captains, he then ordered, come on, get up, you're not dead yet, before you die, at least act like a captain and use your bankai, Kamamura spoke, who do you think you are, bankai, against a traitor like you, Tosin walked up, wait Kamamura I'll do it, his sword glowed with spiritual energy, Tosin spun his sword, there are three ways to achieve captain rank, the first way is to pass the captain's exam in the presence of three or more captains, including the head captain, the second way is being recommended by six or more captains, and having three of the remaining seven captains approve it, the third and final way, is by defeating a captain in the presence of no less than 200 officers, Kenpachi spoke bored, I know that, so, Tosin spoke, I've had a suspicion about you ever since you made captain rank by killing the former captain of squad 11 I believed you were a monster you crave bloodlust and destruction you will eventually destroy the peace of the 13 court guard squads, Tosin said, and the fact that you are assisting the Ryoka fighting against us and bringing chaos all because you crave bloodshed, am I Ronzaraki? Kenpachi said still bored, yeah yeah preach to someone who cares you're the good guys and I'm the bad guy right? Why don't you just say it? If you hate me so much then why not use your bankai on me? Tosin told him, no, I'm not saying I hate you. He then stopped spinning his sword. I'm saying you're beyond redemption, he then said, I'm sorry, but for the sake of peace, I must terminate you. Kamamura got up and jumped back he gazed through his helmet at his old friend Tosin. Tosin brought his sword to his face and placed his palm on the ring on the hilt the ring began spinning and expanded. Soon Tosin had both his hands out as the ring expanded to a big size and glowed. Bankai. The ring suddenly split and multiplied into nine rings which spread out the rings then went into different directions in a circle. Soon a massive black hole formed from the rings. Tosin spoke, Suzumushi Tsushiki, and the Kurogi, KBT, Cricket Final Form, Devil Cricket, Kenpachi was surprised, Tosin spoke, this is my Bankai this entire area is my Bankai, what do you think Zaraki, I doubt you could imagine such a sight, Tosin then walked up to him, although you probably can't see anything right now, Kenpachi noticed, what's going on I can't see I can't hear I can't smell, then Kenpachi got a gash on his shoulder as Tosin attacked him, Tosin was right behind him, how does it feel being in a world without light or sound? Terrifying, isn't it? The blind captain then explained about his bankai and the karogi deprives the senses of sound, sight, smell, even spiritual pressure drawing you into a dark black hell. He raised his sword to strike again, only one person can escape it. Only the one holding Suzumushi. Kenpachi reached out but got attacked. Tosin told him, it's useless. You won't capture me. Dot. Dot by trying to guess where I'll strike next. Even the greatest of swordsmen feels fear in total darkness but I was born into a world without light. But then Kenpachi attacked. Tosin was surprised. What? 
Kenpachi grinned his usual crazed grin. Tosin then spoke. Now I see you truly are a demon you're right at home in this black hell. You never felt a moment of fear. Tosin then attacks again, very well. I will not waste any more time, Sakyoku Hill. Rukia was placed in front of the giant halberd blade. Yamamoto spoke. Now then let the execution begin. Soifen spoke. Not many showed up she took notice only squads 2, 4, and 8 showed up what are the others thinking. Soon they heard footsteps Soifen was surprised Rukia looked as Baikuya walked up without Renji who she had put down herself. Rukia spoke, be Baikuya. The elder Kichiki looked away from Rukia, Baikuya then looked to a hidden spot where she detected her husband's spiritual pressure, Minato kun I believe in you. Baikuya had no doubts in her mind about her husband's strength she had seen his speed. He was faster than the so-called goddess of flash. Then Yamamoto asked, Rukia Kachiki any last requests? Rukia nods, yes just one. Elsewhere in the Sarate, Yumichika had been struggling against Hisagi, who noticed his captain's bankai so, he opted to finish the fifth seat off until Yumichika revealed a secret. His Zampakudo was actually a keto type not the right sword for a squad that loved melee fighting. Back at the courtyard, inside Tosin's Bankai the blind captain had been attacking the berserker captain, but he kept missing. Tosin was shocked. How? He can't see, he can't smell, he can't even detect spiritual pressure, yet he's evading me. He rushed at Kenpachi and struck out, but Kenpachi evaded it. Tosin thought, again I keep missing his vitals by a hair. Tosin avoided Kenpachi's strike but, Tosin leapt back after evading me. Dottie keeps striking closer and closer. He truly is a demon. Kenpachi felt his blade strike Tosin. I got him that time it was just a nick, but I got him. A bankai that deprives the senses this is trouble worst of all I can't detect spiritual pressure. Can't see can't hear can't even smell. Kenpachi increased his grip on his sword but I still have touch and as long as I have that I can hold my sword and feel when his blade cuts into my flesh. Dot. Dot and evade it. He avoided another would-be fatal strike from Tosin, so it just grazed him, that's all I need to stay alive. I'm even starting to find him with my blade, but he's a captain too, so I can't beat him with just my instincts and reflexes, Kenpachi thought. This seemed new and interesting at first but it got old real fast I want to cut some flesh. Kenpachi then reached out, now what? I have to home in on his location to cut him, but I can't see or hear, and I was never good at detecting spirit energy. Humph this is supposed to be a fight stop hiding, and let's hack each other to pieces. Yuchiru appeared in his mind and said take a wild swing. Kenpachi thought annoyed, I've been doing that. Ikaku appeared next and said, I'd use your mind's eye. Kenpachi was even more annoyed if I could do that he'd be in pieces already. Then Yumichika shows up and said, if it were me I'd surrender beautifully. Kenpachi thought, go to hell. But then an idea hit him Kenpachi grinned, wait that's it. There is a way to find out where he is. Tosin noticed his smile, he's smiling again even outmatched he still wants to fight. Tosin rushed at him ready to deliver the final blow, your threat to the peace Kenpachi Zaraki. You're too great a threat to be allowed to live. He actually managed to pierce Kenpachi with his sword, he didn't avoid at that time or was it that he couldn't? His warped love of bloodshed gave me an opening. But then Kenpachi grabbed Tosin's sword he was able to see and hear again. Kenpachi spoke, hey where have you been? Tosin shouted, no. Kenpachi sliced him with his own battered sword. Kenpachi asked, I can see and hear again. Is it because I caught you? Or because I'm touching your sword? He then let him go, come on let's do it again. I got the hang of it now next time I'll grab your arm before your blade sinks into my flesh. Tosin was wounded and he breathed heavily, damn I won't lose I won't lose to you. He rushed at Kenpachi memories flowing into his mind past memories of a woman he once knew she was the original wielder of Suzumushi but when she was killed Tosin took the sword. But just like he told him Kenpachi grasped Tosin's arm and sliced with his own sword actually disabling Tosin's Bankai. Kamamura couldn't believe what he was seeing as his friend's Bankai was shattered Tosin. Masaki had been watching the whole battle, I can see why my little boy had so much trouble with him. The hybrid captain was impressed by Kenpachi's power. Tosin refused to surrender, I'm not done yet. But Kenpachi had enough, this is boring, I quit. I won't fight someone who's near death. He then turned to leave farewell dying is no fun once you're dead, you can't fight anymore. Tosin then rushed one last time at Kenpachi and tried to impale his blade into him but he was so weakened from having his bankai dispelled than the two strong slashes earlier that his sword didn't even rip into Kenpachi's Hayori. Tosin spoke weakly and in the name of justice I must stop you. 
Kenpachi spoke, save it. He then raised his own sword to deliver the death blow, if you won't die so much fine. He aimed down. But a crack was heard as Kamamura blocked it with his arm, and it struck his helmet cracking it. Tosin spoke, S. Sajin. The large captain spoke softly, it's all right Tosin you've done enough. This one will never understand. One of his eyes was seen and looked rather animalistic. Tosin knew his friend was sensitive about his animal appearance, Sajin I. Sajin assured him, I know say no more. The captain's helmet cracked and broke, revealing his face he looked like a canine of some kind of fox or wolf. Kenpachi spoke, so that's you look like under that helmet. Sajin narrowed his yellow eyes, you don't look very surprised. Kenpachi explained, well I care very little for looks in a fight, but let's see if you have the strength of a beast to match that look of yours. Sajin spoke, you are too arrogant Zaraki you get too caught up on the appearance of strength and not realizing the true strength of your opponent. He then warned him, I'm not as nice as Tosin. Sajin then raised his sword, Bankai. Kenpachi watched as a massive giant wearing samurai armor rose up. Sajin and his sword had a red spiritual aura around them. Sajin announced his Bankai name, Kakujo Tenjin Myoo, O.T., the Diraja of Kelasutra's heavenly punishment. Sajin spoke out ready to fight, come Kenpachi Zaraki time for the bloodshed you love so much. Kenpachi smirked before laughing, bloodshed A, eh? I love it alright, if that's what you want I won't hold back, if you die come back and we'll fight again, but then a massive wave of spiritual pressure was felt by all of them, Masaki looked toward Sakyoku Hill, it's time, she then flashed toward the barracks of squad 13, Sajin spoke, that's, Kenpachi nods, yeah looks like it's begun, Sakyoku Hill, the massive halberd was emitting strong spiritual pressure, Squad 10 barracks. Tashiro spoke, it's begun. Tashiro then left, let's go Matsumoto. Ranjiku nodded, right captain. They both vanished. Near the Sakyoku. Kayan looked up, the Sakyoku is active. No. Rukia, damn it where is that Ryoka boy the half hollow lieutenant then took off. Hidden Sakyoku hill. Minato under his Jinjutsu saw it. So that is the giant execution blade Baya-chan told me about. I have to destroy it. He then sneakily headed toward the blade. Squad 13 barracks. Centero yelled, Kian, where's the captain? The execution's begun. Kian yelled back, I heard you the first time Centero. You don't have to yell. She then yelled more. Captain Rukia's execution has begun are you ready yet? But then a woman appeared she had long light orange hair and green eyes she wore a tattered captain's outfit. She then asked, Shiro can you ready yet? Soon Yukite came out, sorry to keep you waiting I had a little trouble breaking the seal, but I'm ready now, since Central 46 ignored our warning this is the only way, Yukite held a strange object, let's go Sensei, Kiyan, Sentaro, we're going to destroy the Sakyoku, Kiyan and Sentaro both yelled, yes sir, Masaki then turned and spoke, try and keep up Shirokun, she then flashed away, Yukite flashed after her, near the Sakyoku, Aizen is heading toward Sakyoku Hill, I can't let Rukia Kachiki get killed. That bastard's plan cannot be allowed to happen. His plan is immoral and inhumane. It will ruin several innocent lives. In the Sarate, Orihim felt some massive spiritual pressure. What is that noise? Yichiru wondered, has it begun? Uryu spoke, what? Then we have to hurry. Yichiru spoke, I'll see you guys there. Orihim was surprised, what, why? Yichiru explained, I don't care for the execution but Ichi might be there, and if he is I have to help him. Orihim then thanked the lieutenant, thank you. Yichiru looked back at her, your weird jiggles, why are you thanking me, why wouldn't I help Ichi, he's Kenny's friend, she then looked back ahead, I'll take care of the strong ones, your guys handle the wimps okay, she then took off in a burst of speed, leaving a shockwave and crater behind, as they watched her disappear Uryu commented, s she's fast, Ganju spoke, she's crazy, Orihim watched, thank you Yichiru, Sarate elsewhere, Renji slowly opened his eyes, Ugh, am I alive? Huh? He looked to see someone healing him, you. He saw Hanataro healing him. Hanataro spoke, H hello. Renji spoke, you're that guy from squad 4 who was with Ichigo. What are you healing me for? A voice spoke. I brought him here. It was Rikichi. Renji spoke, Rikichi. The boy explained. I heard he got thrown in jail for trying to help Lady Rukia, so I thought he might treat someone who got hurt doing the same thing. Hanataro explained, I guess the central relief station got destroyed by squad 11 while squad 4 was out. He snuck in and opened my cell. Rikichi explained, I couldn't believe that you lost to a Ryoka, or that you escaped and were aiding the Ryoka, and that it was for their sakes that you were pointing your sword at us. 
He then lifted his bangs to reveal a tattoo similar to one of the many that decorated Renji's face. Rikichi spoke, I remembered I joined the court guard squads because of you, I want you to live no matter what, so you can fight the way I like which I think is pretty cool, Renji spoke, Rikichi. The boy then brought out an all-new outfit, here a fresh shihaku show, a brand new towel and a headband, wear them please. Hanatara spoke, I wanted to try and save Rukia on my own, and didn't want to get anyone else involved but it's beyond my abilities. He bowed, please save Rukia, Renji told him after getting dressed and re-tying his hair in the ponytail. Don't worry I will. Sakyoku Hill. Yamamoto spoke, very well your request shall be honored the Ryoka will be allowed to leave. Isane spoke, how cruel, he truly won't allow them to live. Anahana spoke, he wasn't being cruel Isane he was being compassionate, at least she'll die with some peace in mind. The guards then came up, and then the Sakyoku powered up more. Yamamoto spoke, let the Sakyoku fall. The halberd gathered a lot of spirit energy. Everyone watched as the blade continued to power up, Rukia thought, Ichimaru shook me from his words earlier my resolve has returned maybe, it's because of the head captain's promise, or maybe because Wanisama turned her back on me, Baikuya had her eyes closed, Rukia spoke, thank you Wanisama, three squares rose from the ground and made Rukia fly up, Nana watched, Kairaku spoke, Nana don't look so sad, you're making me feel bad, Nana assured him, I'm not sad. Then the entire blade lit up into an inferno of flames. Soifen was shocked, the halberd is in flames. They all watched as the flames twisted into a visible form. Dot, dot a massive phoenix was now seen hovering in front of Rukia. Yamamoto announced Kaiko O King Firebird. The halberd has assumed its true form. It will impale the condemned ending the execution. The massive bird shot toward Rukia with its beak aimed to kill her. Rukia thought. I'm not afraid, I've had a good life, I made a friend, Wanisama took me in, Kayan assisted me, and Ichigo tried to help me, I feel no sorrow, no pain, I have no regrets, my heart will go on, Rukia thanked everyone she ever knew, but then something blocked the bird make that someone actually two people, Rukia recognized the first one as Ichigo, but the second she didn't he, had spiky blonde hair, and cat-like blue eyes he, wore an open white hakama jacket and hakama pants, on his chest Rukia could see the number zero, he had a zampakudo, Rukia spoke, I Ichigo, she then asked the blonde, who are you, Minato grinned revealing sharp elongated canines, I'm Minato Namikas, Rukia then yelled, you fool, Ichigo why did you come back, W what? Rukia yelled, you should realize by now that you can't beat Wanisama, she'll kill you for sure this time, I've made my peace with death, I don't want to be saved, but then Kayan appeared in front of Rukia, Rukia, Rukia paled, K Kayan, Kayan then yelled, what is wrong with you, I thought I taught you better than that, do I need to retrain you? He actually pulled Rukia from her prison, Ichigo, Minato, take care of the giant flaming chicken, sure thing, Ichigo smirked, leave to us. Baikuya watched inside with relief, Minato kun you made it in time. She then turned her gaze on the orange-haired soul reaper. Hmm, I sense he has gotten stronger perhaps a test. Soifen spoke, I impossible, how can just two people block the power of one million Zampakudo with just two? Who are they? Kairaku spoke, Nano is that him? Nano nodded yes sir. He matches the description. Kairaku chuckled, so in the end the Ryoka saves the day. Then the phoenix cried out, scree, it struck both Ichigo and Minato, whoa, Rukia cried out, Ichigo, Minato turned to see the bird rearing back, Ichigo it's backing up for its second blow, Ichigo spoke, right, he turned to face it, Rukia cried out again, no, Ichigo, you won't be able to block him a second time, he'll destroy you, the bird then shot forward intent on killing the blonde ranker and the orange haired soul reaper. But then strands wrapped around the beast's neck holding it in place. Ichigo and Minato were shocked then Masaki appeared. Ichigo spoke, Mom. Hey Ichigo, I told you I won't let your friends die. Then Yuki Take appeared holding a strange object centero, and Kiyan were at his side. Isane was shocked, Captain Yuki Take. Kiyan, Kairaku spoke, Hey there handsome what kept you? Yuki Take apologized, sorry I had some trouble releasing it. But now I'm ready. He brought up the object with a strange crest on it. Soifen recognized it, that's the Shihoin crest, she then yelled at Amida, quickly stop them, they're going to destroy the Sakyoku, Yukitake and Kairaku then prepared themselves and stabbed their Zampakudo into the object, 
Their spirit energy shot up the threads and traveled up toward the bird and destroyed it. The bird returned to its sealed form and snapped in pieces. Everyone had to duck and cover to protect themselves from the shards. Ichigo was impressed, whoa. He then decided to do his part. He began swinging Zanjetsu with one hand and drew Hinatahim with the other. Rukia asked, wait Ichigo what are you doing? Ichigo spoke, I'm going to destroy the scaffold. Rukia was shocked, wait. Ichigo you're insane. Ichigo told her, just shut up. He raised both his zampakudo and slammed them down. Masaki smiled while watching, a ah, young love. Reminds me of when Isen and me first trained together. The orange-haired hybrid knew she had a job to do. She turned her attention on the repentance tower she then pointed one finger at the tower. I never liked my brother's idea on having a repentance cell made. A purple light crackled on her fingertip, Siro. She then shot a massive wave of purple hollow energy at the cell, and when it struck that entire tower was reduced to ashes. Yamamoto and the other captains were speechless, as an ordinary hollow blast made an entire cell made of seki seki rock crumble. They got an even bigger surprise when they heard a snap. They turned to see something shocking the Sekyoku's scaffold was split in half. Isane and the others were stunned to see the damage done. Kayan whistled, whoa I'm impressed, I like this guy. Ichigo held Rukia under his arm Kayan gave her to him. What now? Ichigo we're surrounded. Ichigo spoke, we're going to run. Rukia looked shocked at the boy, Ichigo, you can't be serious, there are captains down there, Ichigo told her, then I'll beat them and run, you're not the only one I need to save I need to help everyone who helped me, Rukia studied him, his look his words Ichigo's strength is flowing into me, you truly have grown strong Ichigo, Kane spoke, Ichigo I'll clear you a path, he disappeared down and was about to beat the guards but someone beat him to it, to everyone's shock there was Renji, Rukia spoke, our Renji, Renji noticed Rukia was free, Rukia, Rukia then spoke sincerely, Renji thank goodness you're alive, but then Ichigo raised Rukia, Renji, Rukia was surprised, wait Ichigo, what are you doing, Ichigo then reared Rukia back like he was going to, Kayan spoke, oh I gotta see this, Minata raised an eyebrow, Renji spoke, wait you're not going to, Ichigo grinned, then threw Rukia like a projectile, he yelled catch, Rukia screamed as she flew down, yeah yeah, Renji yelled, you idiot, he caught her, but the speed she was flying caused both of them comically to go flying back a few yards, before crashing to the ground in a heap, Kane was cracking up, I really like this guy, he reminds me of me, Rukia then yelled, tears in her eyes from the fall, ugh, damn you Ichigo, Renji yelled, what if I'd missed her you fool, Ichigo yelled, get out of here, Renji looked surprised, what? Ichigo repeated, don't just stand there, get her out of here. He then informed Renji, I'm entrusting her to you, protect her with your life. Renji then turned and took off. Amida spoke shocked, our Renji. Siphon ordered, don't just stand there you fools, I want all the lieutenants after them. Amida heard his captain's order and took off. Yamamoto gazed at his lieutenant, Shijiro bowed and took off. Isane looked hesitant, Anahana spoke softly, go on. Isane joined the other two lieutenants, they jazzed after Renji. Ichigo disappeared and reappeared right in front of them blocking their path. The three lieutenants froze. Ichigo spun Zanjetsu and placed the cleaver firmly in the ground. Amida yelled, get out of our way. But the orange-haired soul reaper ignored him. Isane spoke her release, run, Idigumo. Two smaller blades protruded from her blade. Chijiro spoke, bite, Ganrimeru. His sword morphed into a rapier. Amida spoke, crush, Jujutsuburi. His sword became a spike flail. But then Ichigo destroyed it with just one punch, shocking all three of the lieutenants. He knocked out Amida. Chijiro tries to attack Ichigo, but the Ryoka Soul Reaper ducks, and then delivers a painful uppercut to the jaw. Isane was shocked, no way, he's not even using his Zanpakuto. Ichigo then appeared in front of her and shoved her away. Meanwhile someone rushed at the Ryoka with their sword drawn. Ichigo quickly intercepts and draws Hinatahum, then blocked a strike from Baikuya. Ichigo smirked and spoke, we meet again Kichiki Baikuya. Baikuya asked, why, why do you insist on trying to save Rukia? Show me your resolve Ryoka. Ichigo asked, I want to know myself aren't you Rukia's older sister, why won't you try to save her? Baikuya said, a foolish question even if I answered you wouldn't understand. Soon the two traded sword blows, then separated. Baikuya spoke, only one path lies open for you now Kurosaki Ichigo you will die. She then had her sword in a ready position, and Rukia too will die by my hands. Ichigo spoke, I won't let that happen, that's why I'm here. I'm going to beat you then make you beg Rukia for forgiveness. 
He had both Zenjetsu and Hinataham ready the two then kick off as they rush toward each other. They show their mastery of Shunpo. Kian ran toward her fallen older sister, Isane. Sentaro yelled, wait Kian, Captain Kachiki is fighting, you'll be killed, but then when he tried to follow her he was flipped by Soifen, Yuki take noticed Soifen wait, the white haired captain was about to flash over, but Yamamoto appeared right in front of them, he tapped his cane, stop right there, Yuki take was shocked, generous I sensei, but then Masaki in the blink of an eye flashed in front of her former lieutenant, she smiled, hey Yamakun, she then cocked one hand back and purple light charged into it, she then punched forward shooting a purple ball at Yamamoto, sending him away, Yuki take looked at her, sensei, Masaki then tossed Yuki take something, here's Shiro kun a cure for your disease, it was a vial, Yuki take drank the liquid he coughed up some black blood which contained all the bad stuff in his system, then he felt his strength returning to full potential his white hair returned to black again. His body is fully recovered. Yuki Take smiled, thank you sensei. Masaki smiled back, sure thing. Yamamoto reappeared, you three are a threat to the peace. Masaki sighed, Yama-kun you haven't changed even when you were my lieutenant back then. Kaio-kun Shiro-kun, let's go. Be but sensei my subordinates. Masaki smiled, don't worry Yuruchi is coming. Masaki flashed away. Yuki take then smile back, got it, he too disappeared, Kairaku sighed, oh boy, he then vanished, Yamamoto flashed after them, Kiyun was being stepped on by Soifen, Soifen spoke coldly, you little scum, what you did was unforgivable you have shamed the Gate 13, but don't worry I'll kill you and put you out of your misery right now, but then a blur slammed into Soifen knocking her away from Kiyun and off the cliff, as she fell Soifen yelled, let go, who are you? A familiar woman's voice spoke, calm yourself I see you're still so hot-headed. The woman then revealed her face. Soifen was shocked, why Yuruchi? Yuruchi smirked, it's been a while. She then reared one hand back and formed a ball of keto Soifen. She blasted her former subordinate with it, creating a massive wave of spirit energy. Isane woke up and found herself on a giant one-eyed manta ray she realized her captain had saved her. Anahana spoke in her soft tone, are you up Isane? Isane spoke, Captain, I, Anahana assured her lieutenant, stay quiet, you weren't hit as hard as the others, she then looked straight ahead and placed one hand on the manta, let's descend Minazuki, the manta flew toward the ground and formed bird-like feet, which it used to land perfectly, several members of their squad greeted them, Anahana assured them they were fine, the manta ray then regurgitated the other two lieutenants, Anahana then told her lieutenant about how Ichigo and Baikuya were fighting the healer captain, then informed her lieutenant they needed to look into something, central 46 chambers, a man stood there with an unconscious boy at his side he chuckled and gazed at the boy, Kichiki Naruto, you are the son of Kichiki Baikuya and Namika's Minato, he knew about Naruto from the beginning because he's been watching him. The man then woke Naruto up. The boy then looks around and freaks as he saw blood and bodies. Naruto shivered. Where am I? The same man that kidnapped him appeared. You're in the council chambers child. My name is Gino Yashiro. Naruto asked. What do you want with me? I want you to join me. Naruto was shocked. Why? Gino smiled. Because you have potential boy. Away from the Saku. Yamamoto pulled back his upper shirt and Hayori to reveal a muscular body, despite his age with scars from all his past battles on it, Yamamoto then released his sword, all things in the universe turned to ashes Riot Jinjeka, his sword was covered in flames, and massive Riyatsu was felt by all, a firestorm surrounded the ancient captain, even the clouds were burned away from its sheer power, Yuki take thought, even now it's amazing the strongest of the fire type Zanpakuto, whose flames are strong enough just in Shikai to burn the clouds away Raya Jinjaka, Masaki called out, Shiro-kun, Kaio-kun release your Zanpakuto already, she then drew her own sword, storm, Rairimaru storm clouds gathered, and a downpour covered her, as her sword was inkist in lightning, and water flowed like a flood around her blade, her Riyatsu and her Zanpakutos made Raya Jinjaka look like a candle in comparison, Kairaku whistled, Weho, it's been a few six centuries since I last saw Masaki Sensei release her Shikai, shall we get started Yuki Take? Yuki Take held his sword in both hands, all waves, rise now and become my shield, lightning, strike now and become my blade, his sword glowed and morphed into identical twin blades connected by a red chain, Sanjayo no Kodawari, is, truth of Pisces. Kairaku held out his blades in a criss-cross fashion, flower wind rage and flower god roar, heavenly wind rage and heavenly demon sneer, Kairaku then pulls and his swords became a pair of Chinese scimitars, Kate and Kankatsu, 
Masaki turned to see her students with their Zanpakudo and Shikai, it brought back fond memories as did Yamamoto and Shikai. Then the four captains rushed and collided creating a massive explosion. Courtyard. Yumichika happily went back to his captain Kenpachi asked, you managed to win without getting hurt. Yumichika nodded yes sir. He then noticed his captain was the only one there. Kenpachi muttered, the mud cried out generous Isama and ran off, I think the old fart is getting into a fight somewhere. Forest below the Sakyu. All was quiet and a leaf fluttered, then two feet crossed and destroyed at Yuruchi, and Soifen traded a few blows. Then the two separated. Soifen spoke arrogantly, just like I thought you're grown soft in the centuries you were gone Yuruchi. Yuruchi spoke back, looks you've actually gotten weaker. Soifen then asked, that tentacin the Ryoka boy was wearing, had your family crest on it, you gave it to him didn't you? Yuruchi confirms, yes Ichigo needed something to help him fly to rescue Rukia, Soifen then taunted, the Shihoin clan will fall from the list of noble families, if your actions are discovered the Shiba clan has also fallen, it's never good to see noble families fall, Yuruchi smirked, my you currently are talkative today Soifen I wonder, she crossed her arms, are you just excited to see your old mentor? Or is this your pent-up resentment against me? The captain of squad 2 or the commander of the Onmitsu Kitten was it that difficult for you to fill my shoes? Soifen spoke, your time has long passed Shihoin Yuruchi. The Onmitsu Kitten is now under my command. She then drew her sword and pierced it into the branch summoning the Onmitsu Kitten fighters. Soifen asked, do you remember? When the commander-in-chief of the Onmitsu Kitten flashes her sword, it signals an execution. That includes former commanders. Yuruchi remained calm, then she disappeared. In a flash all the soilders were defeated as Yuruchi made her former lieutenant remember just why she had the title Shunpo Master. Yuruchi landed on the same branch. I did run away and left my position but I don't remember ever leaving my title. Soifen spoke, Shunpo Master. Soifen then removed her captain's Hayori, leaving herself in her Onmitsukidma outfit, then I'll simply tear that name from you with my bare hands, there's a price to pay for being gone a whole century Yuruchi, you've grown weaker while I've grown stronger, the two then rushed at each other again, and then they had a good old fashioned battle, with neither woman being able to gain an advantage, soon they landed, Soifen noticed she had a slight bruise on her arm, well that's one, Yuruchi was slightly hurt on her leg, that makes one on one, she noticed her outfit, I see you're wearing the Onmitsu Kidden uniform, Soifen asked, brings back memories doesn't it? Yuruchi spoke, I can't really see your moves in that outfit. Soifen spoke, you really think it's a trick? She then used flash step and appeared behind Yuruchi with her sword drawn, sting all enemies to death Suzumabachi. Her sword glowed and became a golden gauntlet with a stinger. Soifen attempted to strike Yuruchi with it, but remembering her student's Shikai ability, Yuruchi quickly flashes away. The two then began another hand-to-hand -hand battle, but this time Soifen managed to strike Yuruchi with her Shikai. Soifen spoke, admit it Yuruchi I've become stronger than you. A butterfly mark appeared on Yuruchi's face. Soifen asked, you remember my Shikai's ability? She then explained, when Suzumabachi strikes someone a Hamanka death crest, mark will appear on their person. And you remember what will happen if the same place is hit twice instead of death. Yuruchi instantly avoided the rest of Soifen's strikes, but however Soifen managed to make more Hamanka marks appear on Yuruchi. Soifen spoke, if you understand that I've grown superior to you, I will end this quickly. Soifen then revealed a new technique, let me show you something Yuruchi. She held her arm out and began to glow with spirit energy, this is a new technique, I just created it combines Hakuda with Kido it's brand new, so I haven't thought of a name for it yet. No, it has a name Shunko. Soifen was surprised, Yuruchi explained, do you know why the commander in chief on Mitsukidam uniform has no back or shoulder coverings? She then held her arm out too. Because it's meaningless Shunko releases a condensed burst of spirit energy along the arms and back of the user, removing all covering of the back and shoulders. Soon Yuruchi began to glow, but even brighter than Soifen, since she's way more advanced soon the orange shirt was gone, leaving her clad in her own Onmitsukidam uniform underneath. Yuruchi then pointed her arm at Soifen, beware Soifen even I still can't control it very well. She sent a massive wave of Riyatsu forward creating what looked from afar to be a massive flash of lightning. Ikaku and Aiba are drinking together, they just decided to end their fight and go drinking they both noticed the lightning like Kido. Aiba commented it and Ikaku berated him telling him it's a Kido. After a few quick banters Ikaku noted their sake was gone and they decided to finish their earlier fight. Loser buys more sake forest. 
The land was totaled by Yuruchi's attack. Siphon couldn't believe how Yuruchi was still so powerful even after being gone for a century. Yuruchi then asked, Do you understand why I never showed you this technique? Siphon then charged at Yuruchi with her stinger. How can you still be so strong? It's not fair. Yuruchi caught her attack and nullified it with Hanki, a technique to dispel Kido. Yuruchi said, Stop you are not ready to use this technique. Soifen continued her attacks, I should have surpassed you, your century of exile should have weakened you, Yuruchi easily avoided every strike, then memories of the past enter Soifen's mind the good memories of when she was younger and met Yuruchi for the first time, and they trained and ate together then the memory that changed her life forever, the exile and crime of Yuruchi. Soifen yelled, I hated you, you betrayed my trust, so I swore I would hunt you down and kill you myself. Yuruchi then pulled back her hand which was still crackling with spirit energy into a Shunko enhanced punch that could kill Soifen if it hit. But she stopped just within reach of the captain. Soifen then asked why she was now crying, why didn't you take me with you Yuruchi-sama? She surrendered to her mentor she fell to her knees in defeat. Yuruchi gazed down at her former lieutenant with remorse and regret the truth is she didn't want Soifen to get involved with what happened to the captains and lieutenants 110 years ago that's why. Sakyoku Hill. Ichigo continued his battle with Baikuya. After managing to stop her Shikai with his new attack from Zanjetsu, Jitsuga Tensho, their battle got even more heated up they had a good old-fashioned sword battle. Ichigo of course released Hinata him. Minato had gone off to find someone to fight himself. Ichigo taunted, come on Baikuya use your Bankai already. Baikuya had enough, very well Kurosaki Ichigo if you desire it so much. She then turned her sword to the ground, I shall show you my Bankai. She dropped it and the sword sunk into the ground. Baikuya spoke. Bankai rows of swords rose up on each side of the captain, scatter Sanbonza Kurakajayashi. The swords became a storm of countless fragments and then attacked Ichigo. The orange-haired soul reaper charged and aimed another Jitsuga with Hinatahim's flame attack mixed in, but the petals blocked it. They then sent Ichigo crashing to the ground. Baikuya asked, have you had enough Kurosaki Ichigo? Ichigo groaned, damn it he got up. I was stupid to think I could beat a Bankai using only Shekai I thought I could go further, but I guess not. Baikuya spoke, watch what you say you make it seem like you've already achieved Bankai. Ichigo smirked, yeah that's exactly what I'm saying Kachiki Baikuya. He then began powering up, Gra, blue spirit energy emitted from his body. Baikuya thought, no way impossible. Even among the noble clans whose members have above average spirit energy only a small 10% ever achieve Bankai those who have achieved Bankai are marked on the history of the soul society. Not only is he not of noble blood, he was never a proper soul reaper to begin with. So why is he emitting such riatsu? It's almost as if. Ichigo then pointed Zanjetsu and Hinatahim forward, take a good look this is my Bankai. He powered up, ooh. Soon both swords began to glow Zanjetsu blue and Hinatahim orange. Soon he shot a blast of spirit energy which created a powerful explosion. Sinbonzakura rose up and defended Baikuya from the blast when her shield fell down. Baikuya's eyes widened. Ichigo was covered by smoke, but when it cleared it revealed him wearing a different outfit. He wore a long cloak-like jacket with red lining inside, it was the outfit of Zanjetsu himself. Zanjetsu was no longer a giant cleaver sword but a long thin daisho blade with the guard shaped like a manji symbol, and on the hilt was a broken length of chain. Hinatahem had become a crimson black armor gauntlet, with black fire coming out and flaming chains there were even flaming claws that could be sheathed unsheathed extended and retracted. Bankai, Tensa Zanjetsu, and Bankai, Kuroi Hinatahem, black fire princess, he added, Baikuya was stunned, those are your Zampakudos Bankai, a glove and an ordinary Zampakudo? She then spoke, I see first the execution, and now the Bankai it seems you enjoy stepping on our honor. Her tone was cold, you shall learn the price of stepping on our honor. In an instant Ichigo appeared in front of Baikuya with Tensa Zenjetsu at her throat, and Kuroi Hanadahum's claws extended also aimed at the noble's throat. Ichigo told the captain, your so-called honor demands Rukia dies if that's the case then stepping on your honor. The orange-haired soul reaper then disappeared and reappeared away he pointed Tensa Zenjetsu at Baikuya, is the reason I achieved Bankai. Just in an instant I lost sight of him. She then spoke, why did you withdraw your blade from my throat? Was it overconfidence? Arrogance destroys the footholds of victory. Baikuya then narrowed her eyes, your technique is not Bankai no, mere Ryoka could ever achieve Bankai. 
You shall regret not slitting my throat when you had the chance. Miracles only happen once there will be no second one boy. Sinbon's Akura flooded toward Ichigo who avoided it easily. Soon the storm of petals kept trying to catch the Ryoka boy, but he was too fast. Baikuya was shocked, can Sinbon's Akura not catch him? Ichigo soon flashed around Baikuya so much it looked like there were 50 Ichigos running at once in different directions. Ichigo asked, what's wrong, can't keep up, and here I can still go faster. Baikuya spoke, don't get too cocky boy. She waved her hand, and Sinbon's Akura's speed suddenly increased as it lunged at Ichigo. Ichigo now had a harder time avoiding the petals. Ichigo was shocked, it got faster, Baikuya explained, when I control Sinbon's Akura with my hands it moves twice as fast, Sinbon's Akura shot toward Ichigo soon Ichigo took to the air, and the petals followed him soon it was too much for him to escape, Baikuya thought, I have him, she then waved her hand the petals surrounded Ichigo, with this speed there is nothing I can't catch, the petals then swarmed Ichigo and covered him, but then Ichigo using Tensa Zanjetsu and Kuroi Hanatahim easily destroyed them all, Baikuya was shocked, impossible, he defeated all of them, soon to her shock Ichigo disappeared, then he spoke behind her, so miracles only happen once a, eh? he was right behind her with Tensa Zanjetsu raised, then that's this, Baikuya turned just as his Bankai sword stabbed at her, she managed to grab it and prevent it from striking, though it sliced her hand causing blood to flow, it wouldn't be good for her to get killed after she was just reunited with her husband and found her son, Baikuya then spoke, I see now you focus your spiritual pressure into that small blade and are capable of fighting at maximum speed, she then released her own spiritual pressure, then I will simply crush that power, Baikuya then leapt away the release causing blood to splatter from her hand, I will show you the true form of my sword, this is the form of Sinbon's Akura when it has abandoned all defense and focuses only on killing the enemy. Her blood dripped down into one of the remains of Sinvan's Akura, the blades glowed and became pink spirit energy, which then rose up like flames, soon the area became dark, and rows of pink swords formed around them, the swords numbered in the thousands, Baikuya spoke, Senkei Senden Zakra Kajayashi, Ichigo was shocked, Baikuya told him, do not worry Ichigo Kurosaki this funeral column of a thousand swords, will not strike you all at once. I only show this form to those I have sworn to kill with my own hands. One of the swords came down and landed in her hand, taking the form of the sealed Zanpakuto. Ichigo was more shocked. Baikuya spoke again, you should feel honored for you are only the second person I have shown this form of Sinbonzakura to. Ichigo muttered, great I feel special. Baikuya then turned her sword up, and pink flames surrounded her as she gathered her spiritual pressure, Ichigo then gathered his blue spiritual pressure soon the two charged at each other, and collided with slashes, below Sakyoku Hill, Orihum and the others have finally arrived, and are shocked by what they see Yuchiru explained to them, that Ichigo was fighting Baikuya right now, Chad wonders why, but Uryu explained that he must crush all hope of them ever killing Rukia, Orham truly believes in Ichigo, Uryu tells Ichigo in his mind to win, or else he'll have to face him, back in the Senkei, Ichigo and Baikuya traded sword blows, but then Baikuya got Ichigo by stabbing her sword into his foot, then used her Kido to blast him in the shoulder, Ichigo is now struggling, damn I got slower, he didn't know his own spiritual pressure was causing his reduction in speed, Baikuya spoke, do not feel so bad Ichigo Kurosaki you did rather well for a mere human, she counted off, you managed to outwit capture by the Gate 13 you managed to defeat captain class officers you survived an attack by Sinbon's Akura, but it's over can't you tell, you're already a corpse. She then raised her sword, it is over, her sword aimed down to sever his head, Ichigo screamed in his mind, no, I want to win I have to win, a voice spoke in his mind tch, then his hand wearing Kuroi Hanadahim rose up and caught Baikuya's sword, Baikuya was stunned, what, a white substance gathered on his face and began to form something, I thought I was pretty clear it's a big problem for me if you get yourself killed Baka, Baikuya asked, who are you? Ichigo laughed, you want to know who I am, I have no name, he looked up revealing half a hollow mask on his face, and an eerie yellow eye with a black sclera, he then slashed Baikuya's shoulder with Tensa Zanjetsu blood flowed, Ichigo laughed very manically then he spoke, Ichigo what a complete amateur you are, couldn't you tell, you've been getting crushed by your own Bankai Ryatsu, every bone in your body is creaking from the strain, Ichigo then added, you really are a hopeless case, Ichigo destroyed the sword he caught, so I'll show you how I use this Bankai, 
Baikuya prepared herself for his attack Ichigo, swung his sword wildly and fired a black red tinted Jitsuga Tensho. Baikuya was shocked, Kurui, black, Jitsuga? She avoided it using Shunpo but Ichigo fired off another from above. Baikuya avoided that one too. Ichigo then slashed with Kuroi Hanadahem and claw mark shaped flames shot at the captain. Ichigo fired a barrage of Jitsuga Baikuya moved back but felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned to see Ichigo, grinning his usual twisted grin. Soon the Jitsugas and flame claw mark struck them. Baikuya was hurt but alive, this twisted spiritual pressure that white mask are you a hollow? Ichigo spoke, who cares, the mask began to move to the other side, soon you will, disappear, Ichigo's voice shouted out, Ichigo was shocked as Ichigo's hand rose up and grabbed his mask, Ichigo yelled, go away, stop interfering, Ichigo struggled, you're the one who's interfering, he struggled to stop Ichigo, no, you fool if you leave this to me we can win, nuo. Soon the Chigo released his spiritual pressure and returned to normal, yet the mask remained on. But his eye returned to its normal auburn color. What was seen of Ichigo's face scowled as he said, Let's finish this Baikuya. Baikuya spoke, Very well neither of us has much spirit energy left let this be our final clash. Ichigo asked, I'll ask you again why won't you try to save Rukia? Baikuya told him, If you win then I will tell you. Soon she pointed with her sword and all the blades condensed into one again white spirit energy emitted from her, and then it formed wings with a half halo circle in the back. Bikaya spoke, Shke, Hakudakin. Ichigo then formed a black spirit aura around him Koroi Hanadahum, joining in by forming a flame aura. Soon the two weary soul reapers charged for the final blow they collided and their Riyatsu auras could be seen from afar. Minato had defeated several low-level soul reapers when he turned to see the auras, ah the kid actually managed to beat Baiyachane, he then headed to the hill using Sanito, Sakyoku Hill, Baikuya and Ichigo stood there both took a hit from their attack, Baikuya then spoke, you wondered why I didn't save Rukia, soon a familiar blonde ranker made his appearance, he passed Minato-kun, she then began healing herself using Kido, Minato grinned, nice job Ichigo, Ichigo was shocked, wait what? The mask finally broke away and revealed Ichigo's full face. Baikuya after making sure she was mostly healed, told Ichigo the story behind her adoption of Rukia, Minato already knew this because she told him when they first met. Ichigo was shocked, whoa so you're Rukia's sister-in-law, and the promises you made to your first husband and parents made you conflicted? Baikuya nodded, yes I didn't know what to do, honor my promise to Hisano or the promise I made on my parents' graves? Ichigo whistled, sheesh and I thought commoners had troubles. Ichigo then asked, so what now? Baikuya spoke, you win Kurosaki Ichigo I won't pursue Rukia anymore you have my gratitude. Ichigo grinned, I won, I won, uh oh Dizzy can't stay upright, he then fell back only to bump into Orahem's rock hard head. Ichigo groaned, arg, that hurt. Orahem gasped Kurosaki-kun, I'm so sorry I have a hard head. Ichigo turned to face her, Orahem, he saw the others, Chad, who are you, Ganju, who are you, he asked Aramaki. The low-seated officer said, just ignore me. Ichigo looked at them, you guys okay? Or you smirked, well we're better than you look. Ichigo asked, did they hurt you guys? Orham shook her head, no, no, I was perfectly safe. Mr. Zaraki even gave me a piggyback ride. She then started tearing up, I was just so worried about you Kurosaki-kun I'm happy to see you safe thanks for not dying on me. Ichigo smiled, Orham. Deep in the council chambers, Gino had told him, do you wish to meet your parents? Naruto was shocked at the man's words, my parents are alive? Gino nodded, yup. Naruto asked, w where were they all this time? Gino explained, your mother is one of the captains of the Serate, and the most famous one her name is Kachiki Baikuya. Your father is an Aranker. I believe his name is Namikaz Minato, or better known as the Yondame Hokage, the one who sealed the Kaiuvi within you, but it's not in you anymore. Naruto was shocked, W what? Gino told him, your father's seal was designed to make the Kaiubi into your Zampakudo. He then told Naruto all about Zampakudo and the Gute 13. Gino spoke, do you want to meet them? Naruto nodded the boy didn't care if they hadn't been there for him he wanted to be with his parents. Then a voice spoke, HADO number 63 Rikm. A blast of lightning shot at Gendo who was struck by it. Naruto then saw a brown-haired man wearing glasses and he had the kindest aura ever felt it was equal to Naruto's own. He had his hand up and it was smoking to show he fired the spell. The man spoke, so you're Baikuya's kid. Naruto was surprised, you must be a captain too if you know my mother. 
The man smiled kindly, that's right I'm the captain of 5th Division Azen Sasuke. Dottie then held out his hand, come on I'll take you to them. Naruto took Azen's hand, but then Gino appeared, give me the boy Azen. Azen glared, no, you are evil and I won't let you corrupt this child. Gino smirked and held up two fingers black spirit energy, formed an arc on his fingers. Gino then spoke, HADO number 90, Kurohitsugi. A black purple box surrounded the captain and the boy, and the spears pierced the coffin, but Naruto was protected by Azen forming a keto force field. Naruto cried out, Mr. Azen, please be okay? Azen smiled weakly, sorry kid. He was severely wounded and collapsed into unconsciousness. Gino spoke, now boy you will be coming with me. Naruto glared, no, then a feminine voice in his head spoke, Naruto listen to me call my name my name is. Naruto called out, blaze, blaze the flames of Hellkayuhimaru. In a red flash he had held a sword that emitted a red flame aura and its guard was shaped like a fox head on the end of the hilt, were nine flaming whips reminiscent of the Kayubi's tails. Naruto was now a little taller his hair now had some of his mother's black hair color in it and it was longer like his mother's he now wore the robes of a soul reaper. His eyes were now a dark grayish blue, and looked as stony as his mother's Naruto emitted a red spirit aura his Riyatsu felt almost near captain level already. Gino grinned, amazing not even 10 years old, and you already have your Zampakudo and Shikai. Not bad kid. He drew his own soon the taller and stronger Naruto, and the captain began a blade battle. They had quite a little battle. This was the scene Ranjiku and Toshiro came on they had Chaz Jin's lieutenant after they saw this place, and then they sensed some powerful spiritual pressure, and came back to see who it was coming from. Toshiro spoke, look Matsumoto that boy has a soul reaper outfit. Ranjiku nodded, yes dot, dot but what squad does he belong to? They watched as a boy no older looking than Yuchiru take on the ex-captain of 5th division, before Aizen and after Shinji. Toshiro gasped, look, he pointed. Renjiku gasped, Aizen, Captain we have to tell Captain Anahana, I'll help the boy Captain. Toshiro nodded, okay, but be careful Matsumoto, he took off using flash step. Toss then flashed over to the boy just as Gino slashed at him. Renjiku quickly blocked the strike. Gino chuckled, hey Matsumoto. Ranjiku narrowed her eyes, Gino Yashiro, ex-captain of 5th division you're under suspicion that you may have something do with the former Captain Shinji's disappearance. Gino laughed, why yes. Ranjiku then placed her hand on her sword, Roar Hineko. Her blade became ashes and attacked the rogue captain. Gino groaned, A-R-G-H-H-H. Gino growled, I'll have him yet. He disappeared using Shunpo. Ranjiku then reformed her blade and sheathed it. Ranjiku then spoke, hey kid come with me. Naruto spoke, but what about Mr. Aizen? Renjiku smiled, no worries my captain went to fetch our greatest healer. Naruto nodded, okay, he sheathed his own Zampakudo. Renjiku then was about to leave with the boy, but then a sword pierced her, and it was sticking out of her stomach it was Gino. He smirked, foolish woman did you really think that I would be defeated so easily? Renjiku spoke as she fell, you bastard. She was hurt but still alive. Gino then turned only to meet a giant ice dragon Toshiro had sensed his lieutenant was in trouble. Toshiro snarled, I'll make sure you pay. Toshiro then pulled his sword out, Bankai. In a blue flash he had ice claws, tail, wings, ice on his shoulders, and three four petal ice flowers above him. Toshiro spoke, Daguren Hyaranero. Gino smirked, so you know Bankai impressive for one so young. Toshiro growled, Gino I'll kill you. Gino held out his sword, do not use such strong words it makes you look weak. Toshiro lunged forward and seemingly froze Gino but then, in a flash it was over for Toshiro the young captain fell to the ground mortally wounded. Gino had his sword out blood coated the ice that now decorated the floor. Gino looked at the ice, it's the wrong season dot. Dot but, I rather like seeing some ice this time of year. There was clapping, and then Jin Ichimaru showed up. He grinned, that was amazing Captain Yashiro. Gino chuckled, why thank you Jin. Now it's time to move on to the next step of my plan. Jin's smile turned even more frightening, oh goody. Central 46 Chambers. Masaki after beating her old lieutenant, had flashed along with her two students to this chamber. Only to discover all the counselors were dead. She was shocked, they've been slaughtered. Yuki take spoke, s sensei they're all dead. Kairaku studied the blood, sensei Yuki take. I think we've been fooled the blood is brown and dry. Both of them were shocked. Then they heard something the three captains then used Shunpo and saw Gino nearly kill Toshiro. Yuki take spoke, no Toshiro. Masaki narrowed her eyes, Kyo-kun, Shiro-kun let's stop him. Both of them nodded, yes sensei. 
Gino blocked a strike from Yuki Take and Shunsui. He chuckled, well, well captains Yuki Take and Kairaku. Jin then pointed his sword at them, shoot to kill, Shinso. His sword extended fast only to crash into Masaki's sword. Masaki glared at the two, Gino Yashiro and Jinichimaru? You two are working together. Gino smirked, of course Lady Koroho, but I won't just tell you my plans, you'll have to fight me for the information. He then raised his sword upside down, Bankai, he began to glow light purple. Jin grinned, hey I want in on this, he then prepared, Bankai. Misaki then brought her hand up to her face, and then spiritual energy began to form a hollow mask on her face. Her eyes turned yellow with black sclera, th end.